in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed i have come with my heart open, I have come with my faith ready to receive. Is someone declaring this by faith? The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Someone is praying. Give me a visitation tonight by your spirit. Give me an encounter tonight by your spirit. Let me part ways with infirmity forever. Let me part ways with sickness, disease, oppression forever. Someone pray. Let me part ways with disfavor forever. Let me part ways with untimely death forever. Let age-long captivities give way forever. Let me step into favor once and for all, grace once and for all, passion once and for all. Rewrite the story of my life. Rewrite the story of my family. In Jesus name we pray we're still going to pray one more prayer and let this be from the depth of your heart let this be with all desperation and seriousness father everything you have in store for me I release my faith to receive all go ahead and pray I release my faith to receive all I release my faith to receive all a change of story I receive a turnaround I receive good news I receive breakthrough healing I receive more seconds are you praying all the overflows make sure you pray our family online connect by faith as you pray God is doing something mighty and marvelous already it's a miracle service For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I truly believe with all of my heart that God is about to surprise someone this night. In the name of Jesus. I truly believe with all of my heart that someone's change of story has finally come tonight. A change of story means what they knew you to be. The name that they used to call you. Even if the name is Ichabod, my God can turn that story around forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you sincerely. If you have an understanding of the labor in the spirit that goes into every service, especially the miracle service, 
your faith will be enlarged to know that God is too serious to be playing with you. The kind of spiritual investment that is in for these declarations to come out. You see, these are not empty words. These are not motivations. These are words that are backed up by the jealousy of God. Let me say it again to a believer that in the name of Jesus, whatever needs to happen for your story to change, may my God make it happen this night. May my God make it happen this night. For some of you, it will not be individuals. It's the whole family, the entire family. The entire family, father, mother, siblings, extending to relatives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh, to Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh, our hope is Yahweh, hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Give us visitation, so God, the kind of visitation only God can give. And we vow that you will be lifted in our midst and the nations will know you are the doer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please be seated with your heart sensitive and alive tonight. I welcome you on behalf of Jesus, the King of Kings, to our miracle service for the month of October. Hallelujah. I think it was yesterday while I was just meditating and thinking about the mighty things that God will be doing and is already doing tonight. And it just occurred to me again that we serve a very mighty God. We serve a God who can change stories. We serve a God who can lift men. We serve a God who can wipe tears. We serve a God who can shame enemies. We serve a God who can answer critics. We serve a God who can give you a reason to rejoice. Truly. Hallelujah. And I want your heart to be prepared because I know by the Spirit that someone came here with desperation and the God of heaven, the one we serve, will not allow you to go back disappointed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I felt stirred in my heart as I prepared, and, and I'm going to just do a bit of salutation shortly, but let me just say this. I felt very stirred in my heart to charge us, um, especially in the area of gratitude and thanksgiving. This, this is not, I, I just thought it, um, while, while we're just coming, it was strong in my heart. Many believers do not see the faithfulness of God consistently in their lives because we have not made it a revelation to always give thanks. I think it's Psalm 107 or so. If you can give that to us very quickly, Psalm 107 from verse 1. Oh, give thanks, it says, unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endureth forever. Verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's speaking with respect to thanksgiving. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 3, it says, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Verse 4, they wandered in the wilderness. Now watch their situation before his intervention. They found no city to dwell in. Five. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, 
and he delivered them out of their distress. Seven, it says he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Verse eight, it says, oh, that man on account of the things that he has done would praise the Lord, not just receive from him, but praise the Lord. Why? For his goodness, it says, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 9. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. Many believers do not lay to heart to be thankful. Many believers do not lay to heart to say, Father, whilst I am expecting this and that and that from you, I must be very intentional about saying thank you for the one you have done. Hallelujah. Do you know thankfulness and gratitude is proof of humility? Hallelujah. We live in a world where many people are embarrassed to acknowledge the contribution of other people to their well-being, to their success, to their progress. We live in a world that prides itself in a feeling of self-sufficiency. In other words, I rose up without any man contributing to my life. And it is not usual for men to give credit because our pride and ego does not allow us to appreciate the contribution of others. Our understanding subliminally is that every time I acknowledge the contribution of God and men, I weaken my sense or my, the, my perception of value. So we believe that every time you declare that unless for God and unless for men, you probably would not be in this state. The feedback we get from that is that it means you don't amount to much. So we always would like to downplay and demean first the contributions of God and then the contribution of people, destiny help us that he strategically positioned. And it is the reason why many people do not receive help continually. I have taught you that one of the greatest ways to invest in relationships is to be grateful. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. This is someone's revelation already. Every time you are part of a functional relationship that benefits you, if you do not have value to bring, water that relationship by being lavishly grateful, continuously grateful, and your gratitude will be an equivalent value. Are we together? Yeah. I have learned as a principle to always be grateful, to never take God for granted, to never take men for granted. And this probably is a word for someone because you came for miracle service tonight trusting God to reopen doors that were once opened. And I can tell you before you receive those doors opened again, you need to know why they closed in the first place. And for many people it closed not just because of demonic attack, because of an attitude of pride and ingratitude. The man who paid your school fees from a child till you became an adult when you are appreciating people, you say, well, you are one of the many people who contributed to my life. Just to let you know I'm grateful. Carelessly grateful. And you find out that with that attitude, the man says, no problem. I've stopped paying your school fees. But the favor that should bring continuity did not rest on you. Are we together? One thing we never see Lot telling Abraham was thank you. Among the many things we never see Lot saying, Abraham, thank you. When God called you, he did not call me. I followed you foolishly and I became as blessed as you. To a point we do not know the one that God called and the one that followed because we were equally blessed. Thank you. You must learn to be grateful. There are doors that will open and remain open for yourself, for your children, your children's children. The prophetic can open doors, that is true. Right keys can open doors, but gratitude can keep the doors open. It is impossible to ignore a grateful person. Even if a grateful person wrongs you, his gratitude will trivialize that wrong and force you to still forgive. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Yeah. This is true for ministry. It is true for your corporate life. You maintain, you fuel relationships by being grateful. Thank you so much for introducing me to Koinonia. 
I know that it's been one year my life has changed and you may think I've forgotten you but just to let you know that I am grateful and the person says who is this I can't even remember and will kneel down there without you knowing and say oh God for this person to have recognized my contribution bless the person again hallelujah some of us don't say thank you to anybody including God God what have you done I woke up so what I'm alive so what my hands are moving so what I can speak so what the day you do the one that is worth saying thank you I will tell you and God refers you to Psalm 3 that I lay me down and I slept he says I only awake because the Lord sustained me in one minute while you are seated can you say thank you Jesus let him know you are grateful I would have been dead by now but for your mercy uh, it is only somebody who is alive that can trust God for prosperity it is only someone who is alive that can trust God for your ministry expanding it is only someone who is alive that can trust God for vengeance go ahead and thank him for life for health thank him for koinonia the marvelous manifestations of his hand in our midst how could we be ungrateful thank you go ahead tell him thank you let him know you maintain the flow of help and favor through relationships when you are grateful Lord I thank you for the things that you have done through this great ministry affecting millions of lives bringing the power of God bringing wisdom to your people we thank you in Jesus name we pray the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your hearts Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path 7 says be not wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil has someone been blessed already I welcome every one of you to this destiny encounter and I know that God himself will give you a reason to rejoice in the name of Jesus I want to specially welcome um, our international guests thank you so much for taking the time to come in let's give them a big God bless you I also want to appreciate our online community those following connecting from across the globe koinonia global thank you so much in the name of Jesus and then please help me honor uh, a dear friend a great man of God all the way from Cote d'Ivoire Reverend Raul Wafo thank you please give him a big God bless you thank you very great very great and dynamic man of God and then we're honored to have her in our presence in our midst tonight gracing us with her presence her, her majesty the wife of the Olu of Wari let's give her a big big god bless you god bless you ma always an honor to have you in our midst and every other person may god bless you and honor you and lift you and surprise you tonight <laughs> refuse to be a spectator if you come and the only thing you see is the miracle of others and clap you wasted your time you must insist and be angry that my portion is what i came for as I receive my own, I will celebrate God as he touches others. But assume you are the only one who came here today. Are we together now? Yeah. The Bible, well, history may not tell us whether the woman with the issue of blood was the only one there. Usually, lepers had a place and those with all kinds of infirmities. They would line them in a common place. She isolated herself by force. There probably were other people. Remember the Bible would tell us that there were people who were sick, lame. Usually they had a place, they kept all of them. But this woman said, I respect everyone who is there, but I'm the one who knows my pain. Hallelujah. If I may but touch. She didn't say we but touch. I don't have the time to keep priming another person's faith, but I came tonight hungry and desperate. So don't allow the carelessness of someone by your left and right perhaps disrupt your focus if the person decides to play games with God tonight save Johnny maybe life is still playing games with him before he knows the reality of what it means to trust God 
and open up your heart for a miracle. But for you who has come, holding a death sentence in your hand as a medical report, but for you who has come, trusting God to swing open gates that have refused to open for decades, please be serious and let your heart be enlarged. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give my charge very quickly and then we'll go to pray. Um, I tell you, there will be a tsunami of his presence and his power in this place tonight. Hallelujah. For as long as I am alive, for as long as I live serving the Lord, I will not let one person become a victim of Satan's assault. Yeah. We will heal all we can heal by the Spirit of God. Deliver all we can deliver. Save all we can save. Stand in partnership with the Spirit to rewrite the stories of destinies. And that includes yours tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are two important factors responsible for commanding unending results in the life of the believer. This is my charge now. Two important factors, and the Lord placed this in my heart to share as we prepare to see the marvelous things that he'll be doing tonight. Two important things that the Lord that is responsible for commanding unending results. You see, it's one thing to have results, but it's another thing to have perpetual, continual, ever-increasing results. And I have taught you here that your result is very important for exalting and revealing Jesus to the nations. He said, herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Two important factors. Number one, the first factor that is responsible for the believer enjoying ever-increasing results is called the state of your heart. Please write it down. The state of your heart. It is amazing that most believers do not pay attention to the states of their heart, your motif, in other words. We keep pressing for all kinds of miracles and supernatural manifestations from God and we have not learned the factors that God looks for. Hallelujah. When you're being trained to go, say, to an embassy, maybe for a visa, say, a U.S. embassy or any other embassy that would probe you and ask you questions, usually if you have the opportunity to have someone train you, they will train you to learn the things that the people are looking for. Is that true? There are certain things they need to know. Maybe your financials, maybe your family ties. They want to know certain things and those things will become the determining factor. They may not particularly have any bias. They don't even know you. But they, are, they have been trained to identify certain factors. Am I right on that? And if they are convinced based on your answer that those factors are there, they may stamp your visa. And if they are not convinced, it's possible that you may lose an opportunity to have your visa stamped. I'm just giving that example. So it's possible to find someone sharp, responsible looking gentleman and he will go out of that embassy and walk out without a visa. And you will see an unassuming person who looks confused but has tried to understand whether by luck or by understanding that this is what they may most likely be asking. And he will come out rejoicing, I have my visa stamped. When you come to God to receive, as much as God is compassionate, as much as God is merciful, God is also principled. I want you to know that he has chosen to submit himself to his word. So God is moved, listen, he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. But what moves him is his word. He has chosen to honor his word. And that is the reason why you cannot whip up sentiments and believe that God will uniquely just exempt you in defiance to his principles. When you know this about God, you will respect the fact that he's a loving God, he's a merciful God, but that there are certain things that heaven wants to see as far as the believer's work is concerned. That is the reason why three or four people can come before the Lord desiring to receive. The Bible tells us about the prayer of two people in the Bible. 
that one person came to pray and another person came to pray. Both of them came to pray before the Lord. And one person stood in pride and self-sufficiency. I am this. I give arms. I don't do this. And another person came as a sinner. Opening his heart to say, Lord, I'm not even deserving of your mercy. Jesus was giving this as a parable. And he said, which of the two do you think will be answered? So the same God is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich unto all. But not many people or not everybody will receive as they desire from God. And I'm telling you that one of the major controlling factors as far as receiving from God and generally doing business with God is concerned is the state of of your heart write that down please the state of your heart Psalm 119 we'll see verse 2 and then verse 10 Psalm 119 it says blessed are they that keep his testimonies watch this that seek him with the whole heart blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart go to verse 10 he said, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. With my whole heart. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. One whose motive has been purified. He said, for they shall see God. They shall see God rise for them. They shall see God come through for them. They shall see God change their stories. I like the way the Bible says it. It just says, for they shall see God. There is no limit to what you can see him do when your heart is pure. They shall see God. To some, they will see God lift them. To some, they will see God bring down their enemies. For some, they will see God open doors. To some, they will see God change their story. But by all means, he says, blessed are those who are pure in heart. You know what it means to be pure in heart? It doesn't just mean to be sincere in your desire. That your motive has been so purified. That behind the things that you seek God for is the singular desire. Of course to improve your life. But truly that you desire everything God gives you. For the purpose of revealing him to the nations as you rise also. That behind the prosperity, behind the lifting. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you, even before I begin to pray, you will find out that certain sicknesses are just dropping. It is true. In my work with God, the greatest determinant, as far as the manifestation of God's hand is concerned in the life of a man, is the state of your heart. You have heard me say it a thousand times. You can fast all you can. Pray all you can. Read the Bible cover to cover all you can. Attend church all you can. As important as those things are. If they do not translate to first of all. Purifying your motive. So you can come to God. And say father in this miracle service. This grace called favor. Let me tell you how the grace of God works. When it comes and finds a corrupted motive. It will not rest. Rather. The Holy Spirit will translate himself to a refiner's fire and walk on your heart first before that grace rests. Because it will be a waste. You will not receive anything. So a man of God is praying and say, Father, let grace come upon me. Give my ministry visibility across the nations. And that grace that lifts men, as it comes, it finds a heart that is corrupt. I hope you know that your heart too is a prayer warrior. It's not just your lips. Your lips can be saying, Lord, be blessed. And your heart says, Lord, give me this and let me show people that I'm not a small person. There are a list of people in my heart that I need to prove a point to. <laughs> Is someone learning? I have found that for years, I studied why people would pray and fast and do everything right. And yet it will look like the God of heaven. I know that is not a wicked God. So what is restraining your hand, oh God, from reaching them? And the diagnosis number one is that the state of your heart needs purging, needs correction, needs adjustment, needs purification. So for many of us, before he comes as a miracle worker, 
allow him come as a refiner's fire. Mm. Father, what is there? You can give me 100 million. You can give me 1 billion. You can bring me out of this financial calamity. What is there to heal this cancer or to heal this diabetes? What is there to turn the, this, this plague of witchcraft in my life? And God says, my hand is not too short. But every time I come, I see that in your pursuit, God is not a factor. You are just using religion or church or spirituality to fuel your lust. And God says, that is not how I work. Is someone learning? In teaching people how to receive from God, if the only thing you teach them are the dynamics of spiritual activities without probing into their heart, you can give them the rod, even if you are Elisha, they will take that rod and lay it on a dead body. Correct rod, correct instruction. It will not come back to life because the state of your heart is the battery that powers everything. You can give someone a brand new clock and it does not work. The battery that powers it is the state of your heart. Every time I prepare for the miracle service or any other service, I tell you, among the many things I ask God to do is, Father, purify my heart. Let it never be that my standing here is a man's ambition just to build an empire. No, the agenda is beyond showing that a man of God is powerful. The agenda is beyond showing that there is a great global ministry. My concern, my desperation, my pursuit, my desire is to see, number one, that Jesus is revealed and that in him being revealed, let his outstretched arm rest upon his people, terminating all kinds of yokes in their lives. John said that I may decrease so that he will increase. Is someone learning now? So that you don't recycle your prayer request again and wonder why I wrote that request in July. I wrote it in August, in September. Lord, why is my prayer request not being answered? Perhaps God is saying, it does not take me any time to visit you, but let's work on your heart. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Oh, Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple. Psalm 21 to 4. I hope someone is receiving already. Yeah. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. It says the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. We are reading to 4 verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 3. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. I like how KJV puts verse 4. It says, grant thee according to thine own heart. Stop there. Other versions will say, oh, grant you your heart desire. But I like the way KJV puts it. It says, grant thee, not just according to his power, according to the state of your heart. Grant thee, not just according to his power, according to your heart. Grant thee your request. Grant thee the anointing. Grant thee the favor. Grant thee the healing. Grant thee all of this according to your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, is one of the grandest formula in the life of this man you see. I am very unapologetic with pouring out my heart before the Lord. Especially when I'm coming to stand. Lord, if, if by any means the desire to build an empire. Maybe I did not know and it just crept into my heart. Let the circumcision start with me first. 
you don't just stand and say be healed and watch people heal. God is not a herbalist. Hello? Are we together now? You want to stand and make declarations and the gates of people's destiny be open? It takes more than prayer and fasting. You believe me on that. It takes more than just Bible study. All those activities only find their place when the heart is truly purified. And what does it mean for your heart to be purified? To see Jesus glorified. That beyond building an empire, beyond wanting to make a name, I rather people forget Joshua Selman and remember Jesus. I rather people forget Koinonia and remember Jesus. If you forget about the name of the preacher who God used to bring you healing and you remember the God who healed you, it's an intelligent bargain. If you forget the name of the ministry that God used to turn your life around, but you remember the one who healed you. But if you remember Joshua Selman, if you remember Koinonia, if you remember the manifestations of power, if you remember the color of the cloth that I wore and forget Jesus, and forget that it was by his mercy. At the end of it, you would only practice idolatry. If you are a man of God here and you came for this miracle service, I want you to listen to me very well. I can tell you with all due respect and by the privilege of God's mercies. I don't know everything about God. I'm a student still learning. But I can tell you, I understand something about the presence and the power of God. And that in the economy of the anointing, the state of a man's heart vetoes every other thing. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Yeah. Listen, when I say these things, I desire koinonia to grow higher. I desire myself as a man of God to keep rising higher. So when I say these things, some of you feel, ah, it's a risk. Are you not bringing yourself down? But that's how we got here. The more we reduce, the more you knew about us. It's a mystery that the more you decrease, you will not disappear. You are still needed. But the more you decrease mysteriously, as you lift him, people also see you. But when the agenda is about lifting yourself and promoting yourself, they will forget you because God is too serious to allow his name to fall to the ground because of the ambition of a man who does not respect and regard him. Is someone learning already? Man of God, that may be the reason. You may be a man of integrity, I agree. You may be a man of character, I agree. You may even be a man who is sincerely loving God, I agree. But perhaps the missing link can be that you are hoping to use ministry as a ladder to gain popularity and fame, followership and loyalty. That is not the assignment of ministry. John 1, 6, there was a man sent from God his name was John 7. The same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. Believe in who? The light. You would also believe in the light bearer, but start by believing in the light. Are we together? Is someone learning? So for some of you, before he comes as a miracle worker, He's coming as a refiner's fire. Ah. Purifying your heart. Teaching you that when God comes to you to lift you, he wants to see how that lifting will translate to revealing his glory and how it will translate to being a blessing to many. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender. It's all about you. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. I 
I'll sing it one more time. Let it enter your spirit. That it's all about you. Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. My greatest relevance is standing behind the cross and pushing Jesus, promoting him, let people see him. It is not only the greatest position, it is the safest position. Because any attack that comes to you will pass through the cross before it reaches you. But when you stand in front of the cross, you become a victim of your own pride. Mm, you are safe when you stand behind the cross. Let Jesus be seen before you are seen. Let Jesus be revealed before you are revealed. Whatever arsenal comes, it will meet with the cross first. Whatever will meet you will have to defeat the cross. I am comfortable standing behind the cross. It's all about you. Hear me preacher. Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. Oh, you alone are God and I surrender. He comes to me with a very simple bargain. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Father, give me the grace. If that is it, let men, even if it means them forgetting about me, no problem. But may they always remember you when they see me. May they always remember your power when they see me. May they always remember your wisdom. I am satisfied being a mirror. No mirror reflects its own image. No. The mirror stands clear and whatever object stands before it, it reflects it. So when people look at you as the mirror and it is you they are seeing, you are reflecting something else. Is someone learning? Yeah. Make up your mind and say, Lord, bring me out of this witchcraft plague in my family and watch a mirror that will reflect you to the nations and the lord says what did you say where is the power that has tied you for 80 years tied your family for 80 years here is a vessel that is determined to see my power and my glory that i want to become a testimony that god lifts lord i'm not just looking for healing i'm not just looking for longevity for the name no, I want to be used as a specimen that every time the nations doubt whether there is a God, you will push me forward and I say, look at my life. I am a testament of what God can do with an ordinary man. Esther goes to the palace and she forgot the purpose for her rising. And Mordecai warned her, said there was a woman there before you all. So if you mess up God's program the same way Vashti left, he will also take you away and keep overturning until he finds a vessel that can be a mirror. For some of you, God brought you here because you are literally at the red tape. It, don't let God take your bishopric because you are determined to be seen. You can still be gifted while forgotten. You can still be gifted, whereas in a strange way, as gifted as you are, nobody will remember you and nobody will place a demand upon your life. And yet God will find someone who may not be as gifted, but say, Lord, from the, I, I came from a village. I cannot even speak very well like Moses. And God says, a stammerer that will reveal me is greater than an orator who will let men see self. 
Someone while you are seated, I'd like you to pray one minute. Father, purge my heart. I know that I came to be healed, but purge my heart. I came to be delivered, but purge my heart. Bring me to that point where my entire life becomes a, a project, a project to revealing you. Go ahead and pray. Overflows, pray. Online, pray. Jesus is speaking to someone. It's not because his power cannot be outstretched. Go ahead and pray. Purge my heart. Purify my motif. I cry to you, the God of my salvation. The tendency is there for self to want to be revealed, for flesh to want to be revealed. Take a minute to pray. This is part of the miracle service. A real miracle is happening in your heart that will ripple itself across every other part of your life. Sana Sabalaska Franda Balaka Tosi prayers. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. For your glory and your fame, it's not about me. As if you should do things my way, you alone are God, and I surrender. When I heard the mighty testimonies that were happening as they were being shared here, my heart. I was almost in tears and I said, my goodness, this is what God can do. I'm sure someone in the congregation is thinking powerful man of God. And yet the man of God himself is thinking powerful God. Powerful God who can walk through ordinary men and produce miraculous manifestations. Can I tell you, there is no end to what you can see in the life of any man who chooses to make his life a mirror that reveals Jesus. Let me give us number two. The state of your heart. And then number two. What is the second factor that governs, that is responsible for commanding unending results? Second to the state of your heart is the level of illumination and understanding you have. The level of illumination and understanding you have. I'm seeing the number 11. I want you to bring all those people out. 11. I just saw fire and I saw the number 11. There is something God is doing in these families. This 11 is not just the individuals. He's locating the individuals for the sake of their families. I stretch my hands. These 11 people, please bring them out. Eleven, bring them out. We hail you, we worship you, we hail you, Most High. We hail you, we worship you. Kaparanda sabra de gebelai 
Oh, visit the families, oh God. Turn their situations around. Hallelujah. Please bring them out. I want you to be very sensitive. I'm hearing the word Savior and God is saying he's imparting grace on those that God is going to be using literally to change their families. I don't know where you are, but if you are part of those people, grace is coming on you now. Bring them out in the name of Jesus. God is separating people. There is a consecration happening in the spirit because you have been identified as that battle axe that God is going to be using to rewrite the story of your family. I don't know where you are, but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. May that grace locate you now. Please bring them out quickly. May that grace apakatos kebraskila. Bring them out. Bring them out. Please don't be distracted. That's why you came. That's why you came. The Lord is still revealing to me. The Spirit of God is moving. Row to row, place to place. Picking men up. The ones who will be saviors. I hear that word again. Saviors. It is like a, a spiritual recruiting. It's time for God to visit your life, visit your family. But he will always need a man, and that man is the one he's finding now. Bring them out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Bring them out. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Shabbat Kaparadadadaba. by the name Jane. I'm hearing the name Jane. J-A-N-E. Jane. Jane. Alanta Sabra Keparaku Sevrestia. I'm hearing the name Jane. The Lord wants to bring mighty deliverance. I tell you, there is a strong anointing in this place. As it's happening here, it's happening all over the overflows and also the airwaves. I'm hearing the name Jane. Before we sit down, Jane, who is Jane? I want to speak to your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a very interesting vision. I'm seeing like a mango tree and I'm seeing mangoes fall down and they are wasting. They don't stay in the tree. And the Lord is telling me this is the issue of fruitfulness that has been happening for a family. Miscarriages again and again. They never stay. I pray for the family of Jane. Every spirit that has hindered fruitfulness, I stretch my hands now. Ah, let that altar catch fire now. 
let it catch fire now. Let it aparoskata. Let it catch fire now. I bring liberty to the family of Jane. Every altar eating up children, destroying fruitfulness by the power of the Holy Ghost, it comes to an end now. Every family suffering from barrenness, unfruitfulness of any kind in the name of Jesus Christ, let that play come to an end now. Believe what you are hearing. Let that play come to an end now. Let that play come to an end now. That a mango tree with fruits, it doesn't stay until it's ripe and it keeps falling down. And you are looking at the tree, the leaves are there, but it is not producing. I say it again, if there is anyone here or anyone you know, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this is the miracle service that delivers your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let me stretch my hands over all that have come to the front. I didn't ask you to come out just to waste my time or your time. I pray for you, everyone who is in front here, for those that are now becoming battle axes for the kingdom, the anointing that you need to return back as a warrior, I stretch my hands from here. May that grace rest on you now. May that grace rest on you now. And for everyone who is out here, because of an oppression of darkness, that God located you by the Spirit, the spirit responsible for this, I speak as one sent. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Release their destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ. For the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Everything that is darkness, we bring light now by the Spirit. We bring light by the Spirit. We bring light by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Your miracles are established forever. In the name of Jesus. Those who can go, just let them go. Those who are still under the anointing, just let them be. Please sit down and let's finish up the second part. Because we need to allow the power of God to move in this place. There are people who have prayed and fasted. There are issues in your life that you must wave goodbye now. It is time and they must wave you back in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the level of illumination and understanding. The second factor responsible for commanding results, unending ever increasing results. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. That lady, just hold her. I want to speak. There's something I just saw. In the name of Jesus, release that lady's destiny now. I speak. I stretch my hands. Let her go forever. In Jesus' name. There will be a serious deliverance here. There will be a serious deliverance here. Usher's grace for you, eh? my dear people, in the name of Jesus, because you have a lot of work to do today with what I'm seeing in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring two people from this row. I just saw light on this row. The power of God is coming on two people, just on this row. Bring them out. There is a strong anointing coming on them. Please, very quickly, we have a lot to do.
I'm seeing the power of God come where the international visitors are. I just saw light on one person. You have been praying. Bring the person out. The fire. In fact, two people I'm seeing. Please bring them out. Hmm. For someone, you came tonight to contact the grace for signs and wonders. And in the name of Jesus, I'm not, I've not started the impartation yet. But there is something God wants to do. I stretch my hands. May my God release great power upon your life. Great power upon your ministry. Great power upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two people from my international, is, is this one of them? Cameroon. I'm seeing deliverance happening for someone who came from Cameroon. Cameroon. I can imagine that there were a number of people, but Cameroon, this is very serious witchcraft. And God wants to bring this demonic thing to end. Cameroon. Do you have, if they are under the anointing, I need to know who is from Cameroon. Cameroon, spirit of death, people dying before their time. You are coming from Cameroon? Ah, I'm seeing a snake. What is this? Parasho Baragosieta, Kradila Kaparandos Keata. I give you authority over snakes and scorpions. Let them go now! Let them go now! Let them go now! Let them go now! The spirit of untimely death destroying people in this family. I decree and declare those altars are destroyed now by the blood of the eternal covenant. Listen, let me teach you something. Look up, please. Look up, please. When you see, when you hear me say the word altar, let your mind not go to a place, a herbally shrine with stones. That's not spiritual intelligence. An altar is not a place. An altar is a system of authorization. What you call an altar that is built is only a reflection, a physical expression. Even if you destroy that shrine, it does not mean the altar has been destroyed. The system of authorization is what we call an altar. Are we together now? Yeah. I want to pray for you. Cameroon. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every of our lovely Cameroonian families that are here connected, here on ground or connected online. I don't know why God called your name, but right now, that plague of witchcraft, help this gentleman. I command it. Be delivered now. Shame and reproach that has plagued your family, it comes under arrest in the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me a family. The hand of God is going to come upon you now. When women marry, they must return back to their husband's homes. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that whatever makes that happen, by the blood of the eternal covenant, it is hereby destroyed now. It is hereby destroyed now. It is hereby destroyed now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me something. Please don't be tired there. Eh? This is a miracle service. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and the spirit of the Lord is showing me Kogi state. That there is a mighty deliverance. Help them now. That is coming upon Kogi state. Now it's a sign and a wonder. The moment God shows me the map and I see the people from that state. All those who are oppressed from that state. The power of God begins to touch them. It's a sign and a wonder. It's how God does. Therefore I'm praying. Kogi state. Every enchantment. And every divination that has tied men down. Be released right now. Bring them out. Be released right now. Every power.
part of the state, Kogi state. I bring you liberty by the spirit. I bring you deliverance by the spirit. Spirits of untimely death, all kinds of yokes of darkness, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This is koinonia for you. Matthew 4 and verse 16. Let's finish up. I'm giving you the second reason or the second basis, the second factor that controls unending supernatural results. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone you could not lift your hands very well. I don't know what happened to your, your is it, um, is it a, I, I don't know if it's a, a bone condition or whatever it is. Wherever you are, I want you to lift it now. Lift it now. You will see that a miracle has happened. And if that miracle has happened, stand up where you are. I want to know those that the power of God has touched. Your right arm, I'm feeling that pain just right here. This is what is happening to someone. But in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, as God has given this instruction, I declare be healed now. Be healed now. Now do what you couldn't do. Stretch your hands. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus, whether it's a bone condition, whatever it is, go ahead. Are you seeing what Jesus is doing? Go ahead. Stretch your hands. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Shortly we'll be taking testimonies and when it's time for testimonies, check yourself and then you come out. Just sit down. I need to do justice to this. Matthew 4, 16. But the people which sat in darkness saw a great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, it says light is sprung up. So you're sitting and you're remaining in darkness it describes a position of defeat, failure, stagnation, and everything like it. But it says they saw a great light. And remember in Isaiah 60 and verse 1, when that light that you've now seen comes to you, then you will arise and you will shine. Arise from that place no matter how long you have stayed. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, John 8, 12. Jesus, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, watch this now, I am the light of the world, he says, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Please read the last sentence, but shall have the light of life. There is something in the Bible called the light of life. That means the light that gives life. The light that gives life. In preparing this charge, those two words just, just, it just talk out for me. Light and life. Two words that science still has a hard time defining. Defining light and defining life. When you ask a scientist what is light, they will only give you numerical expressions because it's a reality beyond the scope of the mind. And when you ask them more complicated is even the definition of life. You will not get any direct intellectual definition of life. Because these are not elements that begun with the earth realm. Light and life. Jesus said you shall receive the light of life. The light that gives you life. Hallelujah. In basic biology, we teach about living things and non-living things. And we said when a thing is living, there are certain qualities and certain characteristics that help us to know that an organism is alive. And then when it ceases to be alive, we test it's been dead because we now find the absence of those things that are signs of its life. And I try to study what are the things among there are many things that are called characteristics of living things but i found out about three or four of them are most outstanding number one is movement and motion one of the ways you will know that something is alive is that there will always be movement and motion number two production and reproduction anything that is alive produces or reproduces and number three, growth. Growth.
growth. Number four, exchange. You call it respiration or you call it excretion. There is always an exchange. Replacing the imperfect for the perfect. Are we together? There will always be an exchange. Anything that is alive must have experienced these four things, these four qualities. There must be movement, motion. So when a body is dead, Isaac Newton taught us in his law of mechanics that it will remain in that state except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. Otherwise it remains there because dead things ordinarily do not move as far as science has revealed to us. Are we together now? Yeah. And then production, reproduction. Everything that is alive grows. Listen, that means you can test whether you are alive in destiny or not using these indices. If there is no movement in your life, if there is no production and reproduction, if there is no exchange, if there is no growth, even if you are breathing, you are dead. And the Bible says, when he went to the tomb of Lazarus, how did they know Lazarus was dead? Because all these things stopped working in his life. And when he said, Lazarus, come forth, the first thing that happened was movement. Lazarus left the grave and came out. And he said, lose him, remove those grave clothes and let him go. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Your degree of illumination, your degree of understanding, as far as the results you desire are concerned, will be what will govern the manifestation of results in your life. You may love God with a pure and a sincere heart, but in a state of spiritual ignorance, bankruptcy of sufficient light, and my goodness, I taught you here and I've taught you for many years. Listen to me. That lights are in levels. The Bible says he made many lights. Say many lights. And then he made two great lights. In our physical world here, we have different expressions of light. The chiefest of them that we know is the sunlight. But that is not the only light. The headlight of a car, headlamp also gives light. There is torch light. There is the light from a matchstick. There is candle light. Is that true? There is light from your phone. And do you know that every time you want to transit, the lesser light will help you until you access the greater light. Then you will not need the lesser light. If the light goes off in your house, perhaps the first thing you will need is your phone light. Or maybe a match, a, a match, uh, uh, what they call it now, to light the matches. Because you will need that light. As soon as you own the candle, you don't need that one again. You will off it. Hallelujah. And all kinds of lights or most kinds of lights are not needed in the daytime because there is sunlight. You most likely will not need your security lights and even the light in your car. You don't need it in the day because there is a brighter and a greater light. If the lights in this place suddenly went off, you may switch on your phone it is light, but not enough to let you see everybody here. So you need high level spiritual illumination if you must reign in light. Carrying a torchlight dimension of light and wanting a stadium dimension of result is flattery. You will need a, your heart flooded with light. Hallelujah. And light in scripture, as you know, is illumination that comes from the word. The entrance of your word, not just the reading, gives light and understanding to the simple. It is on the strength of that light that you command results. Please hear me. I have taught you, and maybe I should take a minute to quickly just do that recap. That for every result, say results, please let me have your attention. For every result in the kingdom, there is a mystery that connects to it. So you can literally list, have a list of results. Breakthrough, healing, open doors, you name them. Everything you wrote on your prayer request and everything that brought you here to receive from the Lord. Connecting every result that you desire in the kingdom. There is a mystery. Another word for principle. 
there is a mystery that connects it. Ultimately, it is the power of God that is the principal sponsor of every result. But that that power is only activated when the mystery connected to the result you desire is engaged. Do you understand this? So, prosperity and financial abundance in the kingdom, listen to me, there is a result that controls it. Lifting, there is a result that controls it. Speed, there is a result or a mystery that controls it. So just knowing what you want does not give you what you want. You must know the mystery that must be engaged to release the power of God to make that become your reality. Apostle, I want speed in my life. Then you need to know the mystery by light that translates to a life of speed. And the Bible teaches us that the mystery that controls speed is waiting. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. From waiting, they will start running and not be tired. They will not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So if you want speed in your life and waiting is a problem, you have violated the mystery connected to that outcome. You will not see it in your life. Are we together? I desire financial abundance. Now you need to know the mysteries. The principle of diligence. The principle of favor. The principle of value. Are we together now? The power to get wealth. All of these forces work together to bring you abundance. Selecting the one you want or selecting the one convenient for you will only end you disappointed. When you are taught to cook, there are certain ingredients that unless you put them in the meal, tasting them like that is not pleasant to you because you were not supposed to lick or take or swallow them like that. It is that reaction that happens while the cooking is going on that translates it to become ultimately a beautiful meal you will enjoy. That's how spiritual principles are. The working of miracles demand understanding. I need to add this plus this plus this and you come up with a spiritual meal that brings glory to God and the saints. Many believers desire results. They know what they want but they have not been disciplined enough to understand the mysteries that are connected to what they want. Healing. I desire healing. What is the mystery connected to healing? The presence of the man of God is not the only factor. There is something called the hearing of faith. Every time you see healing in the Bible, the people must have the opportunity to have the hearing of faith. The only exemption is the raising of the dead. Hallelujah. So if you want to be healed, number one, you must hear the word of God. Number two, you must hear prophetic instructions from the man of God or whatever vessel God will be using. And then that hearing produces faith. You act in obedience. For instance, if you are holding a crutch and it's time to pray and we say, lift that crutch. Don't say I've been holding it for 10 years. You may remain there till we share the grace. How does Jesus see someone who has never walked and he says, stand up by yourself, roll away your mat and go home? It is at the point of obedience that the power of God is released. That is how the healing ministry works. How about a change of story and restoration? Every time you find things go down in the Bible, it is the office of the prophetic to bring restoration. That means you are here saying, I've lost opportunity, lost jobs and the rest. Listen for when a prophetic word comes and you receive, not just by shouting amen. You can shout amen and both your head and your heart is closed. And it just leaves you and goes to someone whose heart is open. You know what amen means? Amen means let it be so as spoken by the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, those you call champions in the kingdom are not necessarily men who are great in themselves. They are just people who by the mercies of God, backed up by their determination and discipline, have found the mysteries 
connected to the various spiritual outcomes that men can desire. So with the intelligence of a consultant, someone comes and says, I have been trusting God for open doors. And the moment you mention the problem, the man of God, his spirit just goes to the mystery that brings that result. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, my doors have been closed. I will, I will vet you against three things. Number one, what key have you been using to open the door? Because a wrong key, even if a key does not open a door, so we have to vet the correctness of the key. If it's a wrong key, we tell you keep it for another outcome. This outcome, for instance, praying and fasting alone as the ultimate strategy for prosperity is using perhaps not a wrong key, but an incomplete key. There are keys that you have, to, you have to open the padlock, then open the knob many times. And you just pull the padlock alone. And yet the one it takes to turn the door, or the door may be open, but to know how to pull it and take it backwards to open, most people do not know. So you vet the person against the use of the right key. Or number two, if you do not even have access to the key, if it's another man's house you are entering, you have to know how to knock. Because if you try to use the key in another man's house, you are called a thief. Hello? You are called what? A thief. If there is someone else at the other side of that door, you must knock. So I will vet your understanding of relationships. Do you understand the law of honor? Do you understand the law of value? If the person whose door you are knocking is not a friend, he will not open it. If an robber knocks your house, you call the police, you don't open it for him. But if your friend knocks the door, ah, you are most welcome. Sometimes you can be tired, but when you remember that he's a friend. So apostle, doors of opportunities have been closed. Like I started when I, when, when I started teaching. I want to know what you did with the last open door. The person who paid your rent, what did you tell him? Oh, I can't even remember. I threw his number. Uh-huh. We are diagnosing the problem now. It's not enough to know outcomes. You are spiritually intelligent to the degree to which you understand the mysteries that connect to the outcomes. And then, because the hearts of men can be desperately wicked, there are times that the person at that door will refuse to open because the name of the person is Herod. At that point, you don't need friendship. You need power. This is where we come in now. Because we don't come to open the door. By the Spirit of God, we scatter the foundation. And the Bible says that when the power of God came, it rattled the foundation and all doors open. Key or no key? All doors open. Like it's happening for someone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A door can be open and you can pass, but it can close over your children. But when that door is scattered, especially a prison door, everybody comes out. They become beneficiaries of your spiritual diligence. Not everybody was praying in the prison, but everybody came out. Hallelujah. Diligence. Apostle, I want to experience increase in ministry. Men will not just hear you because you have something to say. Believe me when I tell you this. I think I'm sincere. I have knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. You'll be disappointed a thousand times. Men are too busy. They are too desperate, too hungry, and sometimes too frustrated to just fall into the biases of whatever it is. There is a hear ye him anointing. But when that grace truly comes, you will know it is there because it speaks thou shalt take Joshua the son of Nun in whom is the spirit and that thou shalt anoint him he says that should be maybe numbers I can't remember something 18 maybe 27 18 or so one of those scriptures and then he says thou shalt take some of thine honor yeah in whom is the spirit and thou shalt lay your hands on him 19 now watch this and set him before Go, go to verse 18. Go to verse 18. He said, take thee Joshua the son of Nun, a man whom is the spirit, and lay your hands upon him. Verse 19. And set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. Read verse 20. It says, and thou shalt put some of your honor upon him. Why? That the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. 
You need this as a leader. If not, you'll be angry and saying, why are people not listening to me? It's because I'm Yoruba. It's because I'm Igbo. It's not true. It's because you are bankrupt of the grace. This honor is an anointing. It's a mantle. When it comes upon you, even a generation will hearken unto you. Is someone listening? Tonight, we have come with several desires. Your desires represent outcomes that you want to see in your life. But I am telling you that those desires are connected to several mysteries. And that in addition to receiving prayer and all of these things, you must have a determination as a believer to patiently learn the mysteries that must be engaged, that are responsible for the various outcomes that you need to actualize life and to actualize destiny. Longevity is controlled by a mystery. Sentiments is not one of the mystery. You must know, what does it take to live long? I think the thing just happens. Those who die, die. Those who live, live. As painful as it is, I submit to you by the integrity of scripture, it is not true. Let God be true. And all men liars. But if you do not know the mystery and you are guessing, make him blind, bold face. I know I will not die. You may be surprised. How about lifting? What takes a man from your lowly estate? Because there are many of us here, all the overflows outside, following online. You are wondering, Lord, what does it take to lift me from where I am? What does it take to lift me, oh God? And you find out that the lifting, lifting itself has a mystery. The mystery of lifting is that you must know the Lord as Ebenezer. If you just know him as deliverer, it will not lift you. It will deliver you. But you must know the, have the revelation of him as Ebenezer, that stone that helps men. And then you must understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. If you do not understand the ministry of destiny helpers, you will only see lifting in your dreams and visions. You may never enter the reality of it because I have taught you that who hates you does not matter. But in this world of men, who likes you matters. Hallelujah. Even if you are Jesus Christ and you are hanging on the cross, it will take Herod giving Joseph of Arimathea permission to bring that body down. So there are many people who do not understand these things. Believers, are you learning something tonight? So that you don't just say, I know God will do it. You hear what believers say, I know, no, my God is too faithful. You are right, but you are wrong. You are right potentially, but you are wrong because your disappointment will keep recycling as your ignorance permits it. But the day you get tired and say, this miracle service is the moment. A change of story always comes with the prophetic deliverance from all kinds of yokes of shame the prophetic and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet where he preserved healing listen there are few people in the Bible who receive healing by themselves go and read the Bible most times over 95 percent of healing it was a man of God Jesus himself or a vessel bringing a word of faith and then the potential recipient believing the word from God and receiving. There are few people in the Bible who were healed by themselves. So that the moment you just walk in ignorance, you can walk in health by yourself. And it's true that you can speak the word of God because the word of God is living and active. Are we together? But God's standard procedure is to have men he will send who will speak a word of healing and you believe it and that sickness will leave and you do not believe it you see the same way you can stay in a room and receive jesus by yourself but most of the salvation of experience of people came through a preacher that god used whether the preacher spoke as a person, whether some tape or CD somewhere, whether some track somewhere, it took someone outside of yourself to make you aware. Even the utopian eunuch needed help to a point that the Holy Ghost had to move Peter to go and help that man. 
Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because in the next few minutes, already people have received their miracles. But as we begin to pray and see the God that heals and the God that changes stories, I want you to understand that this is how the system of God works. You believe in God, but you also believe in the servant that he has sent. If you believe in God alone, it is not enough for the manifestation of the miraculous. One prophetic word that is believed, received with understanding, and you return back not knowing what has rested on your head. And the next thing you will see that a climate just changes over your life. That those who were rejecting you, you return back home and meet them waiting and say, something told me to bless you. Something did not tell them. It's an anointing. The anointing speaks. It does. The anointing speaks. That something that is growing within you, satanic objects moving in your body, roaming around your body, from your head to your body to your feet, Machines cannot diagnose it, but you, the victim, you know it is there. When you tell people, they say, I, you are just playing games. Maybe you are just seeing things. That one needs more than therapy. It needs power. Say power. power. Let the devil hear it. Power. Mm, needs power. Not discussions, not negotiation. Power. Perhaps some organ in your body right now while you are sitting is already failing. You heard the testimony of the dear lady. An organ, your heart is failing, and this is what is responsible for this. No. In the name of Jesus, let there be creative miracles in this place. Perhaps you may be here, or your loved one, all the overflows outside, maybe following online. Do you know I am humbled, and, and, and I say this, thanks to all the CMDs and those who have made their hospitals. Do you know how many hospitals right now not just in Nigeria, clinics, you know, all kinds of medical platforms that are connected right now because they have seen that the power of God, they have agreed. I'm glad that medicine is coming into partnership with genuine spirituality. That is a combo that is needed, especially in this end time. Hallelujah. That there are doctors right now, there are patients right now watching as I'm speaking. And for those of you who are connecting from any hospital, I want you to prepare your spirit that in the next few minutes, the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, those incurable, inexplainable sicknesses that are just eating life. Someone is emaciating, it's not HIV, the organs are well because machines don't diagnose spirits. Hmm. Machines don't diagnose spirits. Hallelujah. How about those who are in all kinds of trouble right now? Financial trouble? Trouble with your destiny? Perhaps your rent is not paid? How about projects that have been grounded? You started building since 2018. Till now, it has not even reached Lintel level. It's no longer a testimony. This one is not just building. You need restoration. Restoration is not when the building is completed. Restoration is when God does something and blesses you with more than one house and honors you and you will see him you you are able to see the hand of god in your life someone i, I can't remember if it was koinonia here or maybe a personal testimony who got an employment letter and while the person was rejoicing an email was sent again that it was a mistake why must it be a mistake when it gets to my turn say no way in the name of jesus christ it, how do you see something good you are almost touching it in the name of Jesus let me speak over someone whatever has come so close to you just left for your hand to reach and yet it was manipulated by witchcraft I call upon the God of my covenant your hand will hold it this night 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 in the name of Jesus Christ Please sit down. A helper that promises you, come on Monday, he says. You get to his office and he's acting as if you are an assassin that came. Cannot even remember he told you that.
And let me tell you the truth. See, anything you are not ready to confront, you are giving it longevity in your life. Did you hear what I said? You must get angry in your spirit. Yes, sir. Doors open just when you are entering. Others enter, then they stop you and they say, wait. Malasho paru siata. The woman with the issue of blood knew about the fact that water was stirred. I hope you know they were in the same generation. She was not near the water. The person in Mark 5, in, in John 5, was still in the generation of the woman with the issue of blood. That one found himself near the water. The woman sat down outside of the gate or outside of the city when she heard about Jesus. I'm sure she told herself, there is no hope of me getting close to the pool of Bethesda. But I say to myself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. I believe in seasons. I've taught you about seasons and timings. But I've also taught you that the day Jesus comes to your life, a season has opened. Are we together now? Yeah. By the natural course of life, there are things that should happen with time and in season. But Jesus becomes a legitimate exception to all things. He can step into your life today and say it is not next year, it is this year. Um, could that be a prophecy for someone? That it is not next year, oh, it is this year. I say it again, it is this year. You will see the faithfulness of God this year. The job this year, the child this year, the marriage this year, the lifting this year, in the name of Jesus Christ. God has chosen the foolishness of prophetic words to rewrite the destinies of men. That a word comes and you say amen with understanding and God stamps it in heaven and no devil of darkness will come and rewrite it. Hallelujah. While you are here in Koinonia, perhaps outside, perhaps in the overflow, as a prophetic word is coming, my God, there are angels you cannot see going around Abuja, being sent by the word of God. Some of them maybe to national assembly, others to certain ministries, others to certain places. There is a destiny helper sleeping somewhere and an angel of the Lord will come like Joseph, like, like Gabriel to Mary and wake him up and say, God is speaking to you. Come through dreams like he did Abimelech. Listen, Abraham never begged Abimelech to give him anything. It was because Abimelech had a dream. God first warned him about Abraham's wife and to be able to restitute what he has done or what he intended to do, he gave Abraham gifts. Chapter 12, a prophetic word comes. Chapter 13, he returns with untold prosperity. I believe in diligence. I have taught you to be diligent even financially. But please, when you hear me speak over your finances, I know you are a businessman, but still say amen and receive it. Because this God you see can turn your life in literally 24 hours. And if you, listen, and if you don't believe what I'm saying, then it means you are not a Christian. You don't know the God that you gave your life to. Sometimes, in a bid to exalt principles, we downplay God. And we say sometimes carelessly, we find ourselves saying things that, yes, we know subconsciously that God can change stories. But the truth is that many of us, because of our carnality, we have not come to a point where we agree that God can actually change stories. Changing your story in a short period of time is not endorsing laziness. It's because he knows your pain and he knows time has been lost. So he comes in as a God of mercy. Do you not believe in his mercy again? For someone here by this time tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, may my God do something that has not been done in your life from January till September. I prophesy it upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The easiest way for God to raise men is to connect them oh dear i wish i had time this is not this is a miracle service listen you need to hear what i will tell you not everybody hear me not everybody will begin the journey 
of their prosperity by themselves. There are others, your prosperity is already in the prosperity of others. You will prosper by partnership, not pioneering. If you don't understand this, you will be poor for the rest of your life. It is not laziness. There are people God has placed a mantle on. The prosperity God has given them is beyond what they need for their own destiny. Lord, waiting to hear God by yourself will keep you poor. You need to find Abraham quickly. If you are waiting to say, God told Abraham, he must speak to me. You will grow old and you will never rise. If you are Abraham, don't wait for Lot. Hear God. But if you are Lot, you will hear God through Abraham and connect to Abraham to rise. This is a mystery. Not everybody excels by pioneering. Many will excel through their connection. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. In Genesis 13, you put Lot here, you put Abraham here. You will not know who God called and who was blessed. That is the power of connection. When you put two candles here, watch this, and you light a match, you put it on this candle, and you use this candle to light this one, and you keep two of them. Do you know that you will not even know which one lit which? This is a mystery that many arrogant people do not understand. In the name of trying to find God for themselves, finding the key to prosper for themselves, you will get into trouble and time will be going. There are people God has raised already. Discern the grace upon their life and stop wasting your destiny. Tap with understanding and accelerate in destiny. understand what I've said there are people today based on your prophetic blue the prophetic blueprint of your life you would have been a mighty healing evangelist by now but pride will not allow you to humble yourself and in addition to working with God I've taught you on encounters but God has created a system within his body. Not everybody will meet God at the same level. Not everybody will have a visionary encounter to see Jesus. Are we together now? There are a few people not because of their righteousness but because of his mercy. It's an election of grace. He will reveal himself to them and deposit something eternal within them. That every time you desire to walk in certain dimensions, he will refer you to them. You will tap with humility and accelerate. Even if you will later be greater than them, you will start by receiving from them. And there are many people who do not know this. Some of you have come here right now. It is true that you came to receive an idea. But maybe what God came to do was to give you a grace that connects you to somebody who, have, who has paid the 20 year price that you want to pay by yourself. Someone has paid it already and God has worked on his heart and is ready to release when God says he should. Why do you want to waste your destiny in a lot of carelessness? There are believers like that. Not everybody will build a house by themselves. I am telling you, I'm not teaching you irresponsibility, but I can tell you, not everybody. There are those who understand God's program so much, God gave them grace to build. Among the houses they built, your own is there. It's just that while they were building, God did not tell them it's for you. Your assignment now is not just to start building one for yourself. Now, I'm not, you can go ahead and build, but I am just telling you this is how the kingdom works. If it takes 20 years to rise and you that gave your life to Jesus late, you want to wait for 20 years before you rise, get set to get into trouble. Unbelievers know this. What then is the excellency of a leverage? It took you 30 years to know God, to prosper, to find purpose. If it takes your child 30 years, you failed. I'm saying this to some of you because part of the prophetic word you are going to receive tonight is not just a prophetic word for your own personal creativity, but a grace that connects you to somebody who already has your prayer request like this today, now. Hallelujah. You believe that? 
in my own little way with all humility God has used me in my own little way to be an answer to age-long prayers of people this is in our own capacity there is a man of God who may be laboring I'm going to fast for 40 days I must get the anointing for expansion fast for something else fast to know God more fast to understand your purpose more but if it's influence you are looking for the grace is already there don't trouble yourself with sorrow and meet witches and wizards as angels there are people who by election of grace this grace bodily resides upon them with proof follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are you learning now yeah. imagine that you are you are going to the junction and you have to wait for some bus to come and pick you and you see someone he may not be going your direction but he decides to stop and says where are you going I'm not talking of a, a kidnapper genuine responsible Christian and he stops and says where are you going and you say perhaps maybe I'm going to shop right or I'm going to one of the malls and the person says well I'm going somewhere else but you remind me of myself before I've decided to pick you and take you to shop right most likely that person is not a right but most likely he will even pay for you but he now says enter you say no I want to get there by myself and the man says I respect you rain is coming I respect you they leave you there he comes back after two hours you are drenched in rain because of pride and you stand there the boss you are waiting for reverse because of rain and you are standing there you would have received help with honor this is what is happening spiritually to many people there are already doors God is opening how many mantles do you want to get you think you are the first to carry it no ah, Elohim tonight let me give you two reasons or three why we are gathered here and then we'll be ready to get proper into the miracle service you'll be first a very quick walk number one we are gathered here to acknowledge the God who loves and has the power to make the Saints experience victory we are gathered tonight to acknowledge the God who loves and the God who has power to make the saints experience victory. In Daniel 3, 28 and 29, Nebuchadnezzar was forced to acknowledge, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who had sent his angels and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any God except their own God. As a result, I make a decree, he says, that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. I like this because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. We are here to acknowledge the God who loves and the God who has the power to make the saints experience victory. Number two, why are we here? We are here tonight to engage the mysteries of the kingdom that are connected to the various results we desire. We are here to engage the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom that are connected to the results or the outcomes that we desire. John chapter 2. When you read from verse 5, verse 7, verse 9, John 2, his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do. 
an instruction came verse 7 and Jesus said give us verse 7 please fill the water pots with water and they fill them up and then verse 9 the Bible says when the rulers had tasted the water that was made wine look at the dynamics whatever he tells you to do do he now gives the instruction and the water turns to wine why are we here to engage the mysteries of the kingdom every man's water can become wine it depends on what you hear and it depends on what you obey for someone your water can remain water because you didn't even care to find out whether there is a miracle worker among the crowd for someone your water can turn to wine no matter how how late it has been in the feast god can take away that shame by turning water to wine there are times when he will empower your machine to produce the wine but there are times the urgency will not allow that process he can bypass it legitimately and make water immediately to become wine there are times god will empower your farm so that you have a bumper harvest but there are times the hunger you will not even survive dry season he would bring bread immediately when you eat then he will now teach you how to farm well the same one who gives seed to the sower and to the eater is the god you serve make sure you don't receive seed alone he gives both seed and bread bread is processed seed you can consume it immediately and seed is to help you to be able to farm for tomorrow waiting for bread every day may leave you in disappointment but there are times that the hunger that plagues you, whether spiritually or economically, when you are in trouble and you are about to go into prison in one week, you don't need business ideas, you need a miracle. When you caught up the prison now and you are rehabilitated, you now learn financial principles properly. When you are owing rent and someone comes and says, there are five keys to increase, your landlord is going to throw you out by 12. You don't need the knowledge of how to pay rent. You need a miracle fast. Otherwise, they'll throw you out of the house. You can learn financial principles in the rain. Learn to receive both seed and bread. Many careless believers only reach for bread. And God says, no, I don't always give bread. I give bread as a sign of mercy now. Then I give you seed to teach you how to sow so that you don't have to be in that emergency again. Believers were never designed to live off miracles. Miracles are a sign that principles were initially violated. So he comes in as an act of his mercy. When you are now restored, he will teach you the principles that make you to work excellently and more efficiently. Is someone learning now? But tonight there are people who don't need seed. Seed can come tomorrow. There are people who need bread. For instance, if the doctors have diagnosed you that you have six months to live, teaching me principles of dieting will not help me at this point. I am dying. Let me be healed first. Let me know that I will, my organs are not packed up. Then I can go back and you can now teach me. Are we together now? Someone who has lost money. You are now teaching the person and saying, you know what? You can start this way. It is true. But that person is in trouble now. God gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. And everybody has hands to sow and a mouth to eat. Give us this day, not our daily seed, our daily bread. I'm saying that so that when we begin to pray, you lift up your hands to receive both bread and seed. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. When you receive seed, you now understand how to sow, spiritually speaking, and so on and so forth. You can now know how to sow to the spirit through prayer, through word study, so that you have a robust life that will will gain invincibility over demons but right now you need help you need assistance the urgency in your life right now waiting until you learn these principles pragmatically the devil may take your life even before understanding comes so you need bread when you have bread for your nourishment and you have strength then you can use your seed are we together now we are here to engage the mysteries of the kingdom connected to the results we desire finally number three why are we here tonight we are here to witness the living god at work in the lives of god's people we are here to witness the living god the power of the living god 
at work in the lives of his people causing many to know him and to love him more i like this john 2 23 we are here to witness the power of the living god in the lives of his people now when he was in jerusalem at the passover in the feast day many believed in his name why when they saw the miracles which he did they didn't just believe because there was a preacher they believed when they saw they believed when they saw they believed when they saw there are things when men see it enhances their believing it reminds them again for some maybe for the first time that there is a God that is greater than any charm. There is a God that is greater than any speakings, any generational cause. There is a God that is greater than any orchestration of darkness. And it is that God we have come to reveal. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is why you are here tonight, then I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to an encounter that you will live to testify. I know that many are already receiving. And let me tell you the truth. I know, let me say this. I know there are several overflows here and then several others outside. Sometimes my heart pains me because those inside here are a minute fraction of the so many thousands of people scattered across this whole ground. And then not to talk of the many more connecting online. And you, you don't, if I had my way, I want everybody to be in one place where I can see everybody to encourage you as you are seeing me. But you know, no matter the auditorium, at least for now, the size will not be able to take us. But let me tell you this. I'm saying that to encourage someone. You may think that these manifestations is just for those who found their way in the main auditorium. And you may be saying, I mean, maybe the basement, any of the overflows or outside, or maybe fine America, Canada. Can I tell you the truth? The lady who was healed in one of the synoptic accounts the centurion said, I am a man under authority. You don't need to come to my house. He says, speak the word only. And Jesus said, when he looked at him, the Bible says that very hour when his servants came, you can be outside and yet be the first to be healed. Be the first to be lifted. That you have proximity to the man of God does not automatically, it's just a psychological consolation. Let me tell you the truth. As far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, the believer is the one who receives. Not the one close to the miracle worker. Many people were close to Jesus and they did not receive. Others were far off, but with faith in their hearts, they received. So let me bring a word of encouragement to the many thousands of people outside, those across all the overflows and those following online. Wherever you are, please hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of the living God. When it's time to pray, let your hearts be enlarged, be open to receive because the God of heaven is no respecter of person. Are you ready to receive now? Please rise up on your feet. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. I, decree, I decree. And I declare. I declare. That in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Answers, answers. To every issue of concern. Issue of concern. I, receive I receive now. Go ahead and pray. Answers. Health answers. Destiny answers. Marital answers fruitfulness answers someone is praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I receive answers 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 in the name of Jesus I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom 
Until the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, 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 Lord, breathe, breathe upon. Hallelujah. We are going to do a very quick one right now. There are three areas of focus tonight. Number one, prophesying liberty for the various aspects of our lives. Number two, ministering deliverance to people who are oppressed. Because most of the issues you call prayer requests, the truth is that they are signifying the presence of spirits that may be operating for some on legal basis. This is where the ministry of the blood comes. That the blood sustains the unique ability to bring a separation. And you will find out that with that separation, many requests to be answered in a moment. And then I want to take a few minutes and pray for the sick. Those of you who are sick or came with sick loved ones, make sure you release your heart, your faith to be healed right now. Hopefully we'll have the time and in a few minutes, uh, now because we're hurrying up, the moment you have a testimony, I'm going to ask you to walk out very quickly. Some of you who have already received will take a few testimonies and then will enter the stage of prophetic words. That declaration is important to me because that is how many of you will return with testimonies. Not everybody is sick. Not everybody may be oppressed or have any kind of demonic influence of all sorts. But I can be sure that everybody is tired of their current level and that they want to scale heights in the spirit and in destiny. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want to pray for those who have experienced all kinds of satanic issues. My Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Many sicknesses are connected to spirits. It is true. There are many demonic influences plaguing families. Now I'm going to pray and it's going to be, I will ask you in our manner here to shout the name Jesus. And when I do, with humility of heart and the fullness of faith, I'd like you to obey that prophetic instruction. And very quickly, I'd like you to bring out those who will be under the anointing. Now the ushers are limited. Please do me a favor. If someone, maybe you are especially you're a worker, those under the anointing, when I ask you to bring them out, if there's someone under the anointing close to you, just help to bring them out. You don't have to wait for the ushers. They are limited. They are literally tens of thousands of people all over and there's so much they can do. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, here at this miracle service, you gave us authority and you gave us power over snakes, scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. You gave us authority over witchcrafts, altars, and every kind of satanic manifestation. 
Father, there are lives here, there are destinies here that have been under the siege of darkness as individuals, as families, as businesses, plaguing their health, their finances, and various aspects of their lives. This is why your people came. And Lord, I pray right now that as your people shout that name that is above every other name, every spirit that has tied down lives, that has tied down destinies, it is time for you to give way. Ladies and gentlemen, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. That name that defeated sin, Satan, hell, and the grave. And as you shout it, let every spirit that is not the Holy Spirit of God, it will clear the way and it will release your destiny now. And then ushers very quickly, please bring those under the anointing. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. One, my God, I sense a strong anointing. Two, three, shout Jesus. Help them, please. Release every destiny now. Every destiny bow. Be released now. Outside, inside, yokes of darkness, curses. Let God's people go now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, we're still praying. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing hands tied. I've seen this many times. Every hand that has been tied, right now I decree and declare, let the, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring a separation now. 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 The spirit of delay, whose destiny has been delayed here, whose destiny is not rising here. I'm seeing fire falling. Father, let the altar of delay right now, at the count of three, let it be broken. One, two, three, break now. Break now. Destiny delay be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Kabalega beka te beka te kapa. Kradeke pareke ta kusiata. I'm seeing a veil, a veil, a covering, stopping your glory from being seen. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. I stretch my parakatos. Help that lady, my God. In the name of Jesus. That veil that has covered your glory, I tear off that veil now. I tear off that veil now. I tear off that veil now. Oh, oh, oh. oh. outside there is something God wants to do to those outside those outside I want you to lift your hands I stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names those at the overflow outside at the count of three those outside I want you to shout Jesus I'm seeing altars on fire and the Lord is telling me that these are altars of untimely death sitting on the destinies of people some of you have lost your loved ones i don't know why god is speaking to me about those outside right now i decree and declare outside at the count of three one two three shout jesus break now break now break now break now the spirits of untimely death you are under arrest by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release them now. Everyone appointed unto death. I release you now. I release you now. 
I release you now. Shame and disfavor in the name of Jesus to a point where people avoid you like a plague because it's as if you are carrying bad luck. They whisper to one another and say, don't come near this person. The last time I came, I went down. I pray for you. Every negative mark upon your head that makes people to reject you. In the name of Jesus, I wipe it out tonight. 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 Hallelujah. Now, I'm seeing the Lord heal someone right now. I'm soon to begin to pray for the, the sick. This person, you had fibroid years ago. You went to the hospital and they operated you and it's regrowing back again. This is a spiritual thing. I'm praying right now. This is what I see in my vision. I don't know who that person is. By the power, Aparakata Siketea, Sanit Separantas Kaba, Skabarakatos Kabrekata. That devil manifesting as fibroid. It dies now. It dies now. It dies now. Praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day. frontier and those who have come out in the various overflows I speak to every spirit that has tied you down in the name of he who died and rose again this is koinonia a house that God has helped and I declare at the count of three you lose your hold on them and everything you have taken from their lives let there be a restoration at the count of three one two three go now go now Go now, never to return. Go now, never to remain. Go now, never to return. Their bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Their destinies are immune, fortified by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for the sick. Just be silent. I want you to listen to me. I'm seeing something that looks like a white towel. And I'm seeing it being laid on the heads of people. Not everybody. These are specific people it is being laid upon. And I'm wondering what is wrong. And the Lord is telling me that there are destinies that have cried. There are families that have cried. And he's coming in as a bam in Gilead. This is not just bodily sickness. I'm seeing this being laid on people right now. Father, I'm at least with what I'm seeing, it should not be less than 12 or 13. I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know who this, this cloth, I'm sure is a sign of Sukkot that is coming on a bleeding and a weeping family or a man of God. I stretch my hands now in the name of Jesus as I have seen in the spirit in truth let it rest on your head. In truth let it rest on your head. And by this prophetic mystery every and all weeping comes to an end now. 
Alleluia. Please hear me. If you came with a photo of someone as a prophetic contact for healing, while I'm praying now, I want you to connect. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter where they are. I sense a, a mighty healing anointing right now. Please place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle. I want to pray for the sick now. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. Outside, lay your hands. Everywhere. Lay your hands. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise We raise For you were God and God alone your hand I want to pray for you right now I'm seeing so many people lifting up photos of loved ones it looks like there is a demonic onslaught of sickness that wants to bring mockery to the body of Christ people who love God and serve the Lord and then the devil just comes in sometimes as a devourer and the whole savings of families just go in one month in two months because they have to manage delicate health issues. Please, I want you to believe that Jesus heals. Lay your hands. Let me pray for you now. Whether it is a growth. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place Holy Spirit thou art welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place father in the name of Jesus release your faith now I decree and declare you gave men the power over unclean spirits. You gave power to heal even incurable diseases. Your people are here representing themselves and representing their loved ones. In the name that is above all names and by the God who has sent us to be his channels of healing to the nations. I decree and declare right now, every spirit that is back of any infirmity, if that sickness has a name, if that sickness has a name, then I command it to bow now. Amen. Bow now. Amen. Bow now. Amen. Every blood condition, be healed now in Jesus' name. Every malfunctioning heart, you receive a brand new heart now. Cancer, we call you by name and we curse you by the God of heaven. Fibroids of all kinds, you die from the bodies of God's people. Kidney failure in the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle, a restoration of your kidneys. Liver failure. Let there be a restoration of your liver. Gastrointestinal conditions be healed right now. Reproductory conditions be healed right now. Goiter, the Lord is showing me someone. Goiter, be healed now. Eye conditions, glaucoma,
cataract be healed now short-sightedness long-sightedness be healed now brain tumors prostrate problems lumps all around your body be healed now movement of satanic objects around your body in the name of Jesus that movement stops this moment deafness whether on one of the of the ears or both of them in the name of Jesus let them be open now there's someone you're a gentleman you are not able to ease yourself it looks like some um, maybe some urinogenital problem I don't know what it is but you are not able to ease yourself excruciating pain this is what I'm seeing in the name of Jesus right now this moment I decree and declare healing comes for you now <laughs> peptic ulcer be healed now back pain be healed now there's someone you came with severe pain around your kneecap that pain is living now that pain is living now the Lord is showing me a healing happening for someone around your molar severe pain it looks like it looks to you because of the pain like perhaps there may be some hole or some cavity problem may the Lord bring you a miracle now make sure you keep believing the Lord is showing me someone's mother I'm seeing her just sit on a chair she's not able to use her right leg I'm seeing a crutch in the name of Jesus wherever mama is whether she's here on ground or following from across the globe in the name of Jesus healing comes now healing comes now there's someone I think your elder your elder sister is having her lip swell like it's becoming twice the size of the normal human lip this thing you see I'm not a doctor but based on what God is showing me is cancer forming in the name of Jesus Christ I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead the way it came let it go back I say it again the way it came let it go back there is a in fact two people I'm seeing you have a very severe I don't know what the medical name is what they call nose bleeding you can stand and just begin to bleed significant portions of blood coming through your nose in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you now whatever the medical condition is be healed now I'm seeing a gentleman you are here you are SS that sickle cell when this crisis starts for you it's almost as if you are gasping for breath to lose your life in the name of Jesus I don't know where that gentleman is but by the power that raised Christ from the dead may that crisis come to an end now I need to pray for someone you sprained your leg but with what I'm seeing is beyond a sprain on your leg because you are not able to stand straight it looks like there are pins that are choking your leg like pins this thing I need to pray for you there is something wrong with your veins and your arteries in the name of Jesus Christ may my God who is healer bring healing right now bring healing right now for someone you are not sick per se but you are not able to sleep in the night once people go to bed you just lie down and you keep rolling left and right and sleep almost never comes to a point that you are already getting I'm seeing you take a white pill 
something that was given to you in the hospital and it's almost becoming an addiction you are taking it and yet it is not working in the name of jesus may my god who is also your god bring you healing right now again the lord is showing me a woman just like i shared the vision earlier you take in but then you have a dream and all kinds of things happen in that dream soon after that dream you will lose this pregnancy this thing has happened over six or seven times in the name of jesus the power of god is coming on you now help that lady in the name of jesus christ I sing praises to your name. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Someone you are having, I want to pray for you. You may think it's a joke, but I think a doctor warned you that you are having a heart problem that if you are not careful you're going to have a, a heart attack and it can affect you in your sleep you got angry at the doctor the doctor did not lie I need to pray for you because I'm seeing a situation where I'm not a medical doctor forgive me but I'm seeing that your heart is not pumping blood well and a situation where you know how like a car that loses fuel you know how it keeps jacking and stops this is what I'm seeing Prophetic things are very funny. Sometimes God uses other images to show you what he's, he's showing you. I'm seeing like a car. You know how fuel is over and it's gasping and stops. And this is what I see of that person. And then he doesn't wake up again. In the name of Jesus. Anyone having a heart problem, whether you know it or not. Of course, you should always be responsible. I've taught you this. But in the name of Jesus right now. I'm praying for you. Whatever wants to kill you. Using heart attack or heart failure breathing problems in fact be healed now the Lord is showing me someone you even came here with your inhaler you are an asthmatic patient when this thing starts on you it's almost as if you literally feel life passing out of you and this thing has punished you again and again I'm praying for that person you came here literally with your inhaler in the name of Jesus wherever you are may the power of God rest upon you right now rest upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ there is a woman here your concern is not even you your concern is your child that you came with your child is already manifesting autistic tendencies and yet you gave birth to a healthy child. This has been a serious problem for you. Not only is the child hyperactive, it's becoming clear that it's like the brain, the mind is not properly coordinated. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the God of mercy right now, wherever you are across this auditorium, alongside that precious child, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring healing for that person now. My God mighty miracles are happening here someone you came here you couldn't move your legs well in the name of Jesus I want you to begin to move your legs now a supernatural miracle is happening to you right where you are now there's someone you don't have a lump but when you lie down with the left side your chest area you're a lady it's not like it's a lump but the pain is excruciating the power of God is touching you right now. Healing is coming right now. Healing is coming right now. Healing is coming right now. I'm seeing a woman here. You don't see in the night. Because of this thing, you don't drive in the night. Your eyes seem fine, but in the night, especially once it's hazy, you literally can go and stumble across maybe a, a, a door or something like that I'm praying for you you will know that you are healed this night because right from where you are you will see your perfect vision wherever you are be healed now in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus and for those of you who are lifting up photos 
or through your phones or whatever means I'm seeing you whether inside outside Jesus is seeing you more importantly I stretch my hands in agreement with you that those photos representing these people you are lifting in the name of Jesus may my God give them a miracle now 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 in the name of Jesus now here's what I want you to do. We're only going to dedicate five minutes for this. Hallelujah. I want everybody to keep standing. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Even if it's at the time where I was praying and you fell under the anointing, the moment you find out that there is a miracle, it's important that we give people a few minutes to testify because from here I want to get into prophetic declarations. I really want something to rest on your head in the name of Jesus Christ I want a prophetic word to rest upon your head that you must return with a testimony from but very quickly the hand of God has touched you or touched your loved ones or those of you online a miracle has happened to you send in your testimony now now I'm going to give those outside all the overflows the moment you check yourself as you're doing now you see that there is a miracle very quickly come out you can come to my left or to my right very quickly and a few officials will take your testimony I'm seeing people coming out let's celebrate them as they come in the name of Jesus Christ and those who are coming from any overflow if it's for testimony please protocol ushers allow them very quickly and let's have them come out don't sit back a miracle has happened to you check yourself are you celebrating miracles people are coming out now those outside very quickly let's shame the devil let, let's experience, let's enjoy the atmosphere of his presence within a few minutes. And then I speak over your life. Now, while they are coming out, are you celebrating miracles, my God? Look what Jesus is doing tonight. Outside, clear the way for them as they come. Mighty miracles by the Spirit. How many of you have written your prayer requests? Very quickly, let me see your hands. How many of you are yet to write your prayer requests? Okay, very quickly, while we are doing that, please... Bring out your paper, those online, if you are yet to send your prayer request, this is a Bible-believing ministry, and there is a God that answers prayer. Hallelujah. When we come like this by the instruction of the Lord, we agree by faith, laying hands on your requests, and believing the Lord, the God of all grace, to move mightily. So very quickly, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to pass it to the last person by your left or right. Don't worry, no one reads your request. It's between you and God. So just pass it very quickly to make the work easy for the ushers. Please, ushers, make sure you go outside. Make sure everyone's request is here. And let's make that happen on time. So when it's time to pray, we have that quickly. But we're taking a few testifiers now. There are people who have been touched by the hand of God. And I want you to listen for these testimonies. When we take testimonies like this, it is because we want to acknowledge, is our way of saying thank you, Jesus, that we are grateful for the performance of his word in our lives. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Sorry, sir. All right. Please. Go ahead. Praise God. I've not been hearing properly on this ear for several months. And for, this for several, but during the prayers, my ears are open. I can hear completely. Well. You are able to hear. How long for this? This has been like for two, three months now. And then? Some weeks. In the name of Jesus, this miracle that has happened to you remains permanent by the mighty hand of God. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. Yes, sir. Next person very quickly. Medical team, please. Let's walk very quickly so that um, we can have the testifiers come very quickly. This is what Jesus is doing. For some man of God, while you are watching, you are not just watching testimonies. You are seeing what will start happening in your ministry from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh, yesterday when I returned back home, I was having an excruciating pain in my back. So it's, I've never had that kind of pain before. And I couldn't sleep throughout the night. But when then our father, the God's servant, was ministering, he mentioned the issue of back pain. If I checked myself, the, I couldn't see the pain. So as I was now, when he now said we should come out for the testimony, as I was coming out for the testimony, the pain went, uh, left me totally. Completely. To the extent that yesterday, uh, this morning while I was going to church, I could not bend down to... Bend down now. 
pain down to wear my shoe. And right now, any pain, no pain, is gone forever. forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give Jesus praise. It will never return to you again. Let's celebrate Jesus. Yes, please go ahead. Um, I'm short-sighted, and I'm literally like sitting at the back. But you're short-sighted. Yes. How long has this been? Like since last year, late last year. Okay. But I can see clearly. Like okay. even normally before, if I was standing here, there's definitely no way I can see you like clearly. But if you were standing here, you would not be able to see me. Not clearly. And right now. I can see you. Clearly. Yes. How many? Five. Five. Two. One. Two. Five. Give Jesus praise. It will never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Praise God. I have I got an accident about three weeks past now. And when you I had an accident? Yes, three weeks past okay. now. Okay. With the, my left leg, uh, right leg. When you have mentioned that somebody with a light, uh, red leg has a problem, they cannot move. Then I started to move. You said we should move. I started to move my What leg. couldn't you do before? So I could not move like this. My friend, look yes. at me. Run. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return to you again. Amen. And I pray that that accident, as I'm praying for him, I'm praying for someone. Amen. You have no business with accident. Amen. May my God protect you and protect your loved ones. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. It is well with you. Yes, please. Amen. So, Apostle, Mama here came actually, she said she came to this service with swollen feet. Yes. But what my, happened to you? My name is Oka Chungos. I came with her. I came to service with swollen legs because I was having severe, severe pains on my waist. How so long has I that came, been? That it has started for two, three years now. I've been suffering on it. Yes. So as I came, I even I couldn't raise my knees to climb upstairs. I just, by the grace of God, I entered auditorium. So as we are praying now, every prayer is lies on me, both heart, or both chest, everything. Walk Hit now. Me. Walk now. Any pain? Come on, Koinonia. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Swollen feet. Gone. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. It will never return to you again by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I receive. Amen and amen. I yes. receive. Go ahead. Apostle, this is a lump of many testimony. You gave word of knowledge of people with severe chest pain, back pain, yes. and nail pain. All of them, about four of them, they are healed by the power of four God. Four of them. Yes, sir. The pain is gone. Yes. I stretch my hands over you. Sorry, because of time, we're not able to give individuals. We, we just group like that. I, I hope she couldn't don't. raise her leg before. Who is that? Now. Let she me give her the mic. Praise the Lord. I came to church with severe back pain. My brother had to press my back two days ago. When he said, back pain is gone, I placed my hand there and I just turned and discovered it was gone. And I sat down because of the new pain. And he said, you are having new pain. Stand up and it's gone. I stood up and to the glory of God, that new pain is done. Gone I, forever. I had to tie the leg to sleep last night. It is gone. I can squat and Praise Jesus. Up. Let's give Jesus praise. For you and all who are in that category, I stretch my hands. Let the power of God rest upon you. You are healed now. Your healing remains permanent. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's celebrate them as they return to their seats rejoicing. Yes, please. Apostle, immediately you came in, you gave word of knowledge of those who could not use their hand. Our their hand, is... yes. Praise the Lord. I came in for months. I've been having pains here. This is how far I can raise my hand. But now when you were talking, I... Go ahead. Let the devil see it. That is the hand you will use to praise Jesus. Any pain, gone completely. Any destiny that has refused to rise. Because you see, miracles like this are prophetic messages. Are we together? I'm praying for you. The same God who can cause a hand who could not live to stretch. May your destiny answer on that wise. May your destiny answer on that wise. For some of you, before the last Koinonia service, I'm prophesying to you, whatever has not been done from January till now, may my God do a quick walk in your life. A quick walk in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Okay. Gave word of knowledge of a lady with a pain in the breast. There's no love, but he said every time she sleeps and wakes up, she finds her chest, the left side of her breast, pain in her. Yes. But now she's been healed by the power of God. Completely healed. How long has this been? For about a week now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That devil, the way it came, may it go back to hell. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please, Pastor Jakes, go ahead. Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Hallelujah. Uh, a month ago, a stone fell on my leg. Why stone? Walking? Yes, while walking the site. And uh, someone mashed the leg. So from that day, my vein started having issue. I went to the hospital, they treated it, and the vein was still having issue, as if I, I was feeling like nails under my leg. So yes. I, I passed to make mention of the case. He said there is a guy here that uh, it's as if there are nails under your leg. What happened now? Straight to so the point. The veins are, the veins, it's as if the veins are, are rotting. So when I passed to pray over the leg, immediately I, I could start moving the leg, and blood started coming out from this, the, 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 the wound. Pause. So blood. So just oh, blood started blood. coming yes. out. So he couldn't move his, yes. you know, his feet before, but after the prayers he could My move. My friend, so. move now. Are you seeing a miracle that has happened? My God. You can even see that he could not wear a cover shoe. Lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus, I declare perfection for you right now. It will never return again. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let's celebrate him. Next person, very quickly. So, Apostle, you also give a word of knowledge for someone who actually pain his arm? Yes, sir. So, yeah, I came here with this pain on my hand. It, it has been there for like two years. I've tried all I could medically. They said nothing is wrong with me. And then I've been in this pain. But then when the case was mentioned, I felt somehow like, could this be for me? I started sweating all of a sudden. I trying to move the hand. I just realized that it's like this hand is short. This one is longer than this one. Until I notice all the pain is gone. And right now, lift both of them. Again, lift both of them. Again, 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 again. In the name of Jesus Christ. This miracle remains permanent in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please, very quickly. All right, so we have a very interesting testimony here. Yes, please. I, since the beginning of this year, I've been having chest pain. I can hardly breathe. Most times I can't yawn, I can't shout. My chest tights in as if I want to just, I don't know, give yes. up. So when you started counting that we should shout Jesus, you counted the first time. And when I was sitting down, I could not yawn because I was having flu. It was so bad. Then you started counting Jesus, one, two, three. I started shouting. I kept shouting, and I'm still shouting. I'm still shouting. I'm still shouting. And that, that pain is not there. Yes. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. The power of God in the name of Jesus. Right now, I sense an anointing coming on you. I declare perfection. That pain, wherever it is and whatever is the cause, it leaves you never to return again. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Next person, please, very quickly. Praise the Lord. Um, I've been my having God, this there's so many pain. miracles. Sometimes I feel so guilty. For three years now. Um, like, like, hold on just a pain. moment. Um, please let me say this. We don't downplay testimonies in this house. Every manifestation of God's power is worth recognizing. Are we together? So when we have to stop people on the way, you know that a standard miracle service will take hours because it takes hours to even celebrate what God is doing. Hallelujah. So when you see us halt sometimes, I feel sad, but then we have to do that so that we can regulate time. I'm saying that particularly for those who have taken the courage to come and stand. You are always at liberty, even beyond today, to register your testimony, share them online. We don't downplay miracles. And for those of you who probably have testimonies and do not want to share, whether you have some phobia or whatever it is, let me tell you, sharing your testimony is good for you and is good for the saints. Hallelujah. Don't keep silent the manifestations of God in your hand or in your life. You allow for continuity when that happens. And if you refuse to testify, sometimes you open up doors for a reprisal from the enemy again. This is true. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead, sir. I actually have chest pain for a long time now. Yes. So when you were praying outside, like, I can't scream for long, like, I can't shout for long. So and when now, you're screaming, 
I'm fine now, like completely feeling okay. Yeah, I can scream in the name like of Jesus. I was screaming outside, I was holding my chair, but now, but right now, it's gone. Yeah, that heaviness okay returns now. back to the devil in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. amen. Let's celebrate God for his life. Next person, very quickly, praise the Lord. I was having a serious and a severe hemorrhoid pile for quite some time over about pile. Yes, for about 15 years or so. Oh dear. Uh, yesterday I couldn't sleep because of the pain after I, 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 I came out from the toilet. And what happened now? And now the pain has I'm not feeling anything. Completely. Completely. I'm 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 I was I was booked for, for a surgery about three times, even today. I was I went to the hospital, they booked me for surgery again Saturday to meet with the surgeon. And I declined. I came to the church, I go to the medical section, I have I've seen the doctor, I explained to him, I show him the picture, and I key into the prayer. I was at the back outside there, I was praying. And when he, he asked us to, to shout and jump, I key into the faith, and now the pain has disappeared. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. What the Lord has done in your life, let it remain permanent in Jesus' name. God bless you very quickly. Yes, sir. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. This is almost getting to three weeks now. I have not been hearing where from this my left ear. So when I come, I, I still believe in God that God will heal me today. So when our Apostle was praying, yes. I fell under anointing up there. So you fell under, where were you? Up there, up okay. there. Okay, and what happened now? So... When I, when, I, when I wake up, we started praying again. When I prayed, then I, when, when you say we should check ourselves, my neighbor was not talking to me. I started, I said, ah, what is going on? I said, sir, please, can you speak again? And when he talked, I started hearing very clearly. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please, very quickly. Okay, Apostle, we have uh, here a case of facial palsy. Facial palsy. Yes, sir. Please. Since, since 2019, I, I, middle of 2019, I had an experience, and after that, this left side of my face has been paralyzed since then. It's I've been, been paralyzed? Under, yes, sir. I've You've been, seen the doctor on it? Yes, sir. I've okay. been undergoing physiotherapy on and off since then. Mm -hmm. Even this year, I was undergoing physio. In fact, just when I came to church this morning, I was telling the friend I'm sitting with about the experience, and she and someone else, and she was laughing at me. And at some point, I stopped telling her about it. But when I came, I was actually believing God for my mom's healing. So when you were praying, I, I felt some level of relief. Although I still feel the poor boy's not severe. Place your hand there. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the God of heaven who has started this miracle, that facial palsy, Whatever it is called, in Jesus' name, you will give way right now. Amen. We release you and we declare perfection for this miracle. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's give Jesus praise for her miracle. Yes, please. So, Apostle, we have a similar case. Three of them, um, they were all healed of toothache. Toothache? Yes, sir. That's all right. I will, I will just pray huh, for time. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon you and I declare perfection, perfection, Every cavity problem comes under arrest. It's gone never to return again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir. Um, praise the Lord. For over five years, I've been having this new pain that whenever I bend down, it feels like there are pains inside, just like Apostle said. But just after the prayers, I knelt down with faith and I cannot feel it again. It's gone. Completely. Yes, it is gone. In the name of Jesus, it will never return again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take two or three more people quickly there. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since like two months, anytime I do a little walk or I did a little a little walk or a little trek, I will be having a pain on my knee. So to, to even today, I, I, I started to I, I started feeling the pain. But when I first started declaring, the pain was gone. Absolutely. Completely. Gone. You see, once you see repeated cases of certain miracles, there is a message that is connected there. That means every stagnation and everything that has incapacitated your movement. The same way God is healing limbs and healing knees, I decree and declare prophetically, go forward. 
I'm saying it to someone who is serious. In the name of Jesus, go forward. In the name of Jesus, go forward. In one week, may you take the leap of one year. In one week, may you take the leap of one year. Yes, please. Please sit down. All right, yes, sir. sir. So they've all been healed of their kneecaps. They all had pain. You had a problem with your kneecap? Yeah, praise the Lord. Like over two months ago, I strained my nail. I fell into a dish when I was coming back from church. And since that time, I cannot stretch the leg. Or if I sit for a while, I, can't, I have to massage the leg before I move again. And now? Now I can stretch the leg. In the name of Jesus, leg. it will never, never return. I lay my hands upon you and I declare healing. Amen. Let's have two or three here. Severe pain in the eye. He had to even get an eyeglass. So when he came in, he removed the eyeglass. Immediately you climb around. He said yes. for over one hour now. He saw his, for his, over his, one his, hour. It's been normal. Yes, sir. How long has this been? It's more than a year now. In the name of Jesus, as it's happened spiritually and physically, may your vision be cleared. Amen. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. Next person. Apostle, she wrote some prayer points. And immediately you came up. It's like you were just reciting what she wrote down. Number one prayer points that she, she wrote here that God should visit her nation and she shall come in there. And then you mentioned serpentine spirit and also spirit of death. She said she has been seeing her sister dying in the dream. So when fighting snakes also in the dream, but when you ministered, God visited her. In the name of Jesus, my dear, the Lord perfects you, perfects your family. In Jesus' name, I pray. God Severe pain in the ears, gone. Do you know, I prayed for somebody who was slapped in the dream and he woke up physically with that side of the ear, death, completely. Say witchcraft. From the dream, not physically. And he, he woke up with it physically. That's to tell you how real the realm of the spirit is. I'm praying for someone. I don't know what started from the realm of the spirit that you are struggling to fight physically. The same way it started from the realm of the spirit, we end it from the realm of the spirit. I say it again, the same way it started from the realm of the spirit, we end it in the realm of the spirit. My sister, I decree and declare you are perfected right now in Jesus' name. Let's have one last Pain testimony. Pain in her there. right hand. Now Your, she could wave yes. the hand now. Right hand and her back. I have this pain from my back. Yes. So I literally feel the pains through my veins. Yes. But right now, when you came and said um, right hand pains and all that, so it's completely gone. Gone. In I the name of Jesus, anymore. it will never return to you again. Amen. Let's have two or three people, and then please let me request by next week while we are testifying. If possible, let's give priority to one or two of these people because they have labored. It, it takes a lot of courage to come and stand. And since they have stood for sake of time, we may not be able to take all of them. But please be, our, and, and, um, please be at liberty, my dear people. For those of you who may not be able to testify, be very comfortable to register your testimony with the media and the public relations department so that we we'll allow you among those who testify here. We want to know what Jesus has done. Unfortunately, we have to work with time, but please, I want you to feel free, be very courageous to come and testify. But let's see. Apostles, there are several testimony online on those which issue of online. press cases, yes, from Canada, Kenya. Online, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. We are agreeing right from here that for everyone, maybe you read one. Okay. as a witness and then we'll pray for the rest yes all right sir. apostle we have a strategic one from ruth all the way from kenya ruth from she, kenya she received healing from her left breast and she had an encounter with god mightily as you prophesied and then we have so many testimonies of healing of kneecaps and several breast pain related issues all the way from cameroon as you prophesied in the name of jesus christ we decree and declare we use ruth as a point of contact to all our global family, those who have been healed online, we decree and declare, just like we said, distance is no barrier. Your miracles remain permanent. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, sir. So, sir, let every man abide in his calling. I will call the doctor. To do. Okay, so you go ahead. Okay. Apostle, she came into the service with severe breast pain. Though she had breast lumps in her two breasts four years ago yes and she had lumpectomy done but after the surgery the lumps came back to the two breasts 
So she has been battling with this situation. But when you gave the word of prophecy, she yes. believed and then she felt something left her. No more pain. We've palpated that there is no single trace of lumps. She's completely Are you giving free. Jesus praise? No single trace. Father, we decree and declare. You see, that is a prophetic message about productivity. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the restoration God has brought for you, my dear, it remains permanent. Amen. And I'm praying for someone, you may not have a physical problem, but whatever is affecting the factors that are responsible for your productivity, in Jesus' name, we release you right now to be productive. We release you right now to be productive. God bless you, my dear. Congratulations. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Yes, please. On Friday, I couldn't urinate. You couldn't urinate? I couldn't go to the toilet. I couldn't sleep. My stomach was bloated. They told me to take just tea, to take just corn, to take cucumber. I took everything I could take. There was nothing working. But after you prophesied upon sickness of all sorts of names, I could urinate and I saw a drop of blood when I went to the toilet. Just a drop. It's not menses, but just a drop and it stopped. In the name of Jesus, we declare this perfection in your body it remains forever. Amen. We release you right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate Jesus for her. Can we have two more testimonies? I've had quail for years. It's been very difficult using the toilet. And then sometimes the growth is just so, so painful. And then when you mentioned it, I just went back and I tried and I've searched and I, I couldn't find it again. And the pain... The pain is gone. gone. Yes. Give Jesus praise. And I'm also... Thank you, God, because I know when you mentioned glaucoma, I know that my mom is healed, and I know she will come and take Where is she? She's here in Abuja. We agree for her in the name of Jesus that the God who has healed you from pile, may he heal your mom from every eye condition Amen. in Jesus' name. God bless you. Yes, please. Praise God, Koinonia. I want to thank God for healing. When, we, when daddy was in the uh, way daddy was declared about uh, people that they cannot feel rest their hand so and i rest my say we, we should rest our hand i rest my hand when we are in the prayer t uh, department this evening i cannot rest this my here from here and this year i cannot rest so when where you declare everything has gone i follow that anointing everything has gone completely like in the name of jesus Amen. it will never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Yes. Okay, sir. With your permission. Go ahead. That, that, these are testimonies from those following online. Um, this is from Sister Sheon Fumi. She says, while you were ministering, you prophesied about somebody who could not lie down on her side because there was always pain on the breast and there was lump. I immediately lied down on my left side and no pain on my breast again. Amen. Another... That's, all, that's all right, Kenny. We have to take a break on that. We've already prayed for online people. Now, for all of you who are here standing, in the name of Jesus, just make contact with your chest. Let me speak to you, all of you who are here. And then if there are many others outside who were not allowed in, our apologies. Do well to register your testimony. I stretch my hands over all of you who have been healed. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, these miracles remain permanent. And for those who have been healed online, sadly, and could not testify, in the name of Jesus, I declare as I'm praying for them, I pray for those who are standing and all who are at the medical stand, maybe verifying their cases. In Jesus' name, your healings remain permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's celebrate them as they return to their seats. Now, may I request all of us, can we stand and stretch our hands to the frontier where our request? Is there anyone yet to submit his or her request? Let me see your hands. If you're yet to submit your request, please, uh, PR ushers, let's make that quickly. Those outside, I'm hoping that their requests are here too. Those online, if you've sent in your request, connect by faith, believing. And in case you, you, you couldn't send it, don't worry right where you are. Just believe by faith. Stretch your hands, please. This is not a ritual. Don't get too familiar. This is the power of God at work. Someone is declaring, every Egyptian that I see today, I see no more forever. Are you praying? Take a minute or two. Go ahead and speak. Speak by faith. Declare by faith. 
that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, go ahead, bring them. We ask people to bring their prayer requests like this because we believe in the God that heals. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Someone pray, declare by the Spirit of God. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I decree and declare, I'm going to pray and then I will request, I mean, thankfully he just came. I just sensed in my heart to do it. Now I'm going to ask um, Reverend Raul Wafo when I'm praying, he's going to pray in French and just prophesy to all the French speaking nations that are connected to us, hallelujah. We're standing in faith. I just want him to speak and make that prophetic declaration. Um, I'll be with them in Cote d'Ivoire, I think next month, and it's going to be an awesome time. So all of you who are within those, those areas, make sure you connect, and um, it's going to be an awesome time. I was very humbled last when I was there that in a nation that some of them literally don't speak English, but they've been able to learn all kinds of songs in English and every other language, I mean, some, some of them sing Koinonia songs better than you. And um, uh, it's amazing how you are able to preach. And some of them honestly do not understand you, but thanks to the interpreter, and it was such a glorious time, it was such an outpouring. And I believe that God is doing something, not just in East Africa, but I mean, sweeping across the French-speaking nations. And we know that revival is for them too. Hallelujah. So stretch your hands as I speak over and then I invite him to just come and make these declarations. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Father, you have anointed and instructed us, given us grace to speak and declare over these requests. I declare that every request here written, let it be turned to your testimony. Shout a louder amen. Shout a believing amen. The same way you are shouting now, that is how you will shout in shock at the miracle that God will perform in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm prophesying to someone in the name of Jesus that as a sign that God has visited you before you reach home, between now and the end of this service and the time you reach home, May my God do something among your list that will surprise you. And therefore I pray over every one of these requests in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, these requests are declared. I declare that they are turned to your testimony. I declare that they are turned to your testimony every human agent who must come under divine alignment to make this happen in the name of jesus i'm praying that the lord will send them the lord will put your issue in their heart and it will cause them to respond favorably in the name of jesus christ and as always i stand upon this request prophetically and i declare that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's welcome Reverend Raul. And whether you can speak French or not, if you cannot speak French, connect by faith. They've been connecting for us by faith. Now is your turn. And then if you understand French, shout amen on our behalf while he's speaking. Our little children will all shout amen. That's why, you see, they've all learned French, but... A lot of elderly people and adults here, sorry for you. Your generation has passed. And um, yes, sir, please go ahead. Par au nom suprême de Jésus, je veux te rendre grâce pour toutes les nations francophones. Merci pour ce canal de foi 
et la parole relâchée sur cet hôtel qui a un impact sur toutes les nations francophones et sur tous les peuples au nom suprême de Jésus. De la France à la Belgique, au Cameroun, au Togo, au Bénin, au Tchad, au Burkina Faso, au Sénégal, au Mali, en Guinée équatoriale, je décrète, déclare, établi la manifestation de tes pouvoirs souverains. Merci pour ton action surnaturelle. Les divers miracles s'accomplissent par le nom suprême de Jésus. Nous voulons te rendre grâce pour ta parole. Oh Jésus qui continue de grandir et prévaloir. Merci pour ce ministère qui impacte encore davantage les nations francophones. Porte ta gloire afin que Jésus soit célébré et glorifié. Merci pour les guérisons, la délivrance, la restauration, les rétablissements, la manifestation de ton règne. Au nom suprême de Jésus, quelqu'un dise Amen trois fois. Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen. Let's give him a big hand clap. Amen. Are you ready to receive my own? Whether you can't speak English, whether you can't speak French, some of you I'm speaking to you, sometimes I'm speaking to spirits. In any case, there must be a hearing. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, every door that has been closed over your life, I decree now that door is hereby opened. That door is hereby opened. That door is hereby open. That door is hereby open. Number two, everyone here trusting God for a job. May the God that settles men between now and next miracle service, may God settle you gloriously. Settle you gloriously in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, I'm praying Everyone who has been incapacitated economically, something has brought you down financially. May the God of all grace, the one who empowers men to prosper, may he empower you tonight in Jesus' name. Everyone holding what belongs to you, I prophesy in Jesus' name, by the force of faith, may it return to you. By the force of faith, may it return to you. I don't know where the helper of your destiny is, but in the name of Jesus, some of you, maybe your helper is even here in Koinonia as I'm speaking. In the name of Jesus, I connect them to you. And I connect you to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a season where God is beautifying the destinies of the saints. And I pray for someone here, every embargo of shame and reproach that is making men ask you where your God is, from tonight, may your results begin to answer. From tonight, may your results begin to answer. If the mark of death is on anyone here, whether by flight, whether by accident, whether by kidnappers, assassins, it doesn't matter in what form or fashion. I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit, minus you. Minus you for death. Minus you for tragedy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, I just remembered, I think someone had sent me a mail I, I returned from a trip and I read the mail. Students of University of Abuja, you know, was requesting for, you know, if they can be assisted, maybe some bus service for them. I just want you to know that I read that mail and we'll see what we can do about it. I needed to say this. Yes. I just, I just remember that someone, I can't remember the name, but the person made that, that um, these people are students and, and it's only fair that we see what we're able to do. And, and if the person is here, thank you for your advocacy on behalf of the other people. We'll see what we're able to do. Hallelujah. I sense in my spirit to speak prophetically over any of your loved one who is on their way to hell because they have not received Jesus. Wherever they are, whether your father, your mother, like promise said while he was leading us to pray, if there is any of your loved one who has refused, maybe idol worship, 
or whatever and they have refused that they will not make it right with God may the God of salvation visit them we schedule encounters for them in the name of Jesus three more prayers and I want you to receive I want you to lift your hands I'm praying for you every anointing that must rest on your hand and cause you to go forward and to advance before the end of this year as you are lifting those hands I place that grace upon your hand I place that grace upon your hand I place that grace upon your hand go and succeed with the works of your hands in the name of Jesus finally I don't know who has lost anything in your life you've lost relationships you've lost opportunities you've lost money you've lost maybe doors whatever it is you've lost various parts of your body I'm praying for you right now in the name that is above all names may the God who restores who can restore yes and can restore things may my God restore you may my God restore you may my God restore you in the name of Jesus Christ it will be clear from your life that it pays to serve Jesus I say it again it will be clear from your life oh that it pays to serve Jesus it will be clear from your life that it pays to love Jesus that it pays to live for Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ and finally we pray for our nation I don't know how God will do it all Nigeria we may not see wind we may not see rain but we call upon the God of all mercy may he step in mightily visit our economy strengthen the government strengthen the members of Senate by all means may Nigeria move forward and I lend my voice with the law enforcement agents to decree and declare those who have enjoyed crime as an industry whether as kidnapping whether as uh, um, one chance whether as whatever we call it this week may this be the week of vengeance agree with me this week may this be the week of vengeance i don't destroy you but if some of these people don't repent, may they sleep and not wake up. In the name of Jesus Christ. And because you have come here tonight, the souvenir that God has prepared for you, you carry it by faith on your way home. You carry it by faith on your way home. You carry it by faith on your way home. Your way home. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to run to Jesus right now if you are yet to make him Lord of your life our time is fast spent you are here right now I'm giving you just one minute you are saying apostle I do not want to return back home without making a first-time decision for someone or for another person you are saying I need to renew and rededicate my relationship in the name of Jesus it matters that we are concerned about your spiritual growth and you're encountering the Savior wherever you are in one minute I'm going to ask you to leave your seat and run come and stand here you have seen the power of God you've seen what God can do let's celebrate them as they come rise up right from where you are and make your way to the front Jesus is calling you koinonia celebrate them thank you for coming you can pick your bags your Bibles everything you came to church with is this the best you can do koinonia let's celebrate salvation come come all the overflows please make your way to your stand and those who are here you are making jesus lord of your life this call is for those who are coming to jesus you want jesus to be your lord and savior from tonight you are saying i'm tired of my way of living i'm tired of my life i want a chance to make it right with jesus god bless you please come please come Please come. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Come. 
God bless you. If you're coming, come quickly. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son. Hallelujah. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you who have made this decision. It is a noble decision to come to Jesus. I want you to lay your hand on your chest as a sign of surrender. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin right now. I declare that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever. I declare that I'm a child of God. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these blessed people. They have come to you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, making declarations of faith in total surrender. I pray based on the authority of God's word that your sins indeed are forgiven and the power to live a victorious Christian life is released upon you from tonight. You walk out of this place, the righteousness of God, going forward ever and backward never. I decree and declare, receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now please, I want you to follow the counselors. They are waving the placard. All of you in concert, they will have a word with you just for a few minutes and then you'll be back. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Please let me one minute and then let me one minute and then we're done. Um, please, for all who have registered for the seminar we're having with our doctors, the intending, I mean, awaiting couples, and then for those who are medical practitioners, please look to your phones and your mails in the course of the week. It is next week, I think, or so on the 12th, or at least next week or week after. So make sure that um, you will get a text, you will get an official um, communication from our medical team in partnership with the PR department and um, once you have that then you can be ready and prepare for your program. Let me also speak, uh, thank you very much our family in US and Canada, thank all the workforce, we've not reached you, you have received um, a mail from our PR department but I'm yet to communicate. Um, this, this week you will be given the date for our meeting not just the conference, but our meeting with the workers in preparation for the conference. Like you know, we decided to shift all other conferences for next year so that we can have the time to plan. So all our workforce, we have about 5,700 uh, workforce for US and about 4,001 or two for Canada. So we have, um, that's a, a large number already, you can imagine, and that's just the workforce. So by the grace of God, um, we'll be having some time with you, hopefully, um, in a week or two. Just watch, follow as your, the leaders designated would reach you. And uh, just wanted you to know that we are concerned, we are with you, and by the grace of God, we'll make sure we keep you abreast with all the plannings so far. And for all those who are within that region, of course, please prepare your heart. Next year is going to be an extraordinary moment as we come to your region with the power, the life, revival, and the grace of God. Hallelujah. And like I said, I think um, we'll get the data and I'll announce the week when I'll be traveling and coming to Cote d'Ivoire. It was a wonderful time last I was there, and I'm coming there again, and it's going to be an awesome time of revival, healing. We're going to be praying for the sick and trusting God to move upon that land in a very supernatural way. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for your patience. Please rise as we close. Um, I understand that doors are also open for the protocol department. 
for those of you who want to be part of the protocol department please may i request after service that you walk to our pr desk just outside this auditorium and you just register your name and then they will communicate after then and help you to know what you need to do have you been blessed tonight father we thank you for your grace we declare that we return with mighty testimonies in the name of jesus christ let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you